From Austin, Texas, welcome to Fox College Football, presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Thanksgiving weekend here at Texas Memorial Stadium, and it's the Longhorns and the Red Raiders to wrap up the 2019 regular season. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend or a great Thanksgiving and they're still having a great weekend. <laughs> Joe Davis, Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman joins us in a moment. So Texas a year ago, of course, wins 10 games for the first time in a decade. They go to the Sugar Bowl and then carry in what comes with that. That is big expectations in 2019. How do you go from there to six and five coming into today? Well, there's a lot, but I think I would boil it down to two things. Number one, you're just not playing complimentary football. You'll hear coaches say it all the time, especially teams that are sitting there where they are at six and five. First half of the season, the offense was awesome, scoring 40 a game. Defense struggled. But here in November, defense picked it up. The offense can't seem to score. They just don't complement each other. And then the other challenge is your quarterback. And I think a lot of people thought Sam Ellinger was going to fix everything, right? When you got that elite quarterback, especially in Tom Herman's system, he can cover up all the ills of everybody else. But that's unrealistic. And especially losing Colin Johnson. He was his guy, right? We saw Sam a month ago heading into that game. He was pulling the trigger. He was anticipating. He's been holding a little bit more. They're going to ask him today to cut it loose more than anything else. On the other side, Texas Tech sits at four and seven. First season under Matt Wells. They are really close to being uh, completely flipped from four and seven. And they're playing hard, man. You put on that tape and these guys are playing and their seniors are wishing they could be back for another year. And yeah, by close, you mean four games decided by three points or less that they've won zero. Yeah, that stings a little bit. And they know they've got to finish today if they're going to find any way to win. They are going to be down one of their top players. We go down to Bruce Feldman. Yeah, Joe, the heartbeat of their defense, Jordan Brooks, he is a Butkus Award finalist. He's been dealing with a shoulder injury really for the past three weeks, been playing through it. He will not go today. I'm told he's expected to have surgery on it within the next week. Adam Beck, a sophomore, he will move into the lineup, and they need to get more leadership from Rico Jeffers, who will slide into it, but definitely a playmaking challenge for them. That's what they miss with Brooks, and he has been such a leader. That burden is going to go on to some of the older players in this defense in their last game here today. All right, Bruce, on a rainy Friday morning, chance for thunderstorms, although this forecast has actually improved from what it was looking like through the week. Not going to be clean down there, though. No, but I sure like to see a lot of these folks here for the finale. Right, just 17 seniors for Tom Herman, and really, as he told us yesterday, about five that contribute in significant ways. That is it. Right, they've lost a lot of the guys in the middle in this program as well. It's just so many young players that have been thrown into the mix. I think that's another, he's not going to make that excuse, but that's another explanation for why they're sitting here this morning at 6 5. Texas won the toss, they choose to receive. Jake Smith back to return this kick with Deshaun Jamison, who takes a fair catch in the Longhorns to begin to the 25-yard line. Junior quarterback Sam Ellinger got off to a great start this season. And he threw four interceptions against TCU and then injuries and teams dropping eight, not trusting it, not as decisive as you mentioned off of the top. Still some pretty darn good numbers, but the message to him today, Brock, let it rip. They want him to get back to trust in what's around him, trust in what he sees. One, two, run. A year ago, 16 rushing touchdowns, just five of those this year. That's another significant area of difference. And if you're without your guys that you really trust and anticipate, one, two, run. And he's got the capability of doing that. First play of the day for the Longhorns is a Sam Ellinger run off of the replay, and he's got a first down behind this offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, they've been solid, if not spectacular, but Zach Shackelford playing his 52nd game, the captain right in the middle. You know he wants his final one to be a good one, and Devin Duvernay, number one in America when it comes to receptions, and he get the ball in the run game, I think, as well today. Bosham into the backfield. Good timing for that comment. He's got his first carry today, and room off of the edge. 
Sticking the shoulder down, close to another first down against this Texas Tech defense. Very aggressive, very disruptive. Top 25 in the country in both takeaways and tackles for loss. Yeah, that's what Keith Patterson loves to do. Their defensive coordinator's an aggressive guy. Victory goes to the aggressors, he told us yesterday. Broderick Ross, Washington's a senior. He's stout right in the middle. They will miss Jordan Brooks significantly. Number one in America was Jordan in tackles for loss. And that back into the secondary, you better be careful when throwing Mr. Coleman's way. Eight interceptions paces college football. Second down and two, opening Texas drive. Ellinger looks to throw. Now he'll take off. Yeah, crosses midfield as he gets drilled from behind. It's first down. And yeah, the offense, we mentioned Ellinger getting off to a good start. The offense has kind of matched what he's done, where they were you know, one of the top offenses in the country over the first month and a half or so, but pretty sluggish the last four games. Yeah, in the last two weeks in particular, out on the road against this kind of scheme, a three-down aggressive front from Iowa State, from Baylor a week ago, and you're seeing immediately some answers to that scheme with QB run and wide receiver run. A week ago, managed just one touchdown against Baylor. Didn't come until the final second of the game in that 24-10 loss. Dellinger steps up in the pocket and then gets sandwiched. It's Adam Beck who's going to have an increased role today with Jordan Brooks not playing, and Beck brings Ellinger down. And that is what they want to avoid. That is sack number 33 on the season for Texas. And this is once you hitch once, twice, that ball's got to come out. You just got to throw it away. You just have to avoid those negative plays, and that is what Coach Beck, Coach Herman were talking to us about yesterday. A nice finish for the nickelback turn linebacker, Adam Beck, today, but got to get rid of the football right there if you're Sam. 33rd sack allowed this season by the Longhorns. Most in the conference moves him back to the 46 and an option to the short side for Ingram. Keontae Ingram a week ago had the longest run of the Tom Herman era, 68 yards, but injured his ankle on the play. Yeah, didn't play in the second half. It was questionable coming into this one. I think good enough to at least give him something. First third down to this opening drive for Texas, and they'll empty it out. It's an area where Texas has been really good this year. One of the top 15 third down offenses in the country. Four options into the wide side for Ellinger, who delivers to Ingram, promptly dropped by Xavier Benson, and it's fourth down. You know what you're going to get on third down against the Red Raiders. going to be a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Look at the face masks all staring at everybody. Texas tries to run a little rub route in concept to free it up. But credit Benson and all those Red Raiders for being right in the hip pocket of those Longhorn receivers. And that is where that sack just kills you, those negative plays to often destroying drives here in the month of November for the Longhorns. Douglas Coleman back to return this punt from Chris Nagar. Took over the punting duties from Ryan Buczewski midway through the season and has done a nice job. This is landing at the 15 and taking a Texas Tech bounce to the 20. So Texas Tech will have it for the first time on the other side of this break as we take it a break with our progressive insurance game flow. Texas and Texas Tech on a rainy Friday in Austin. Fox College Football is sponsored by AT&T Business, providing edge-to-edge -edge intelligence, and by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. Quarterback for the Red Raiders is Jet Duffy. Started this season as the third stringer, then Alan Bowman goes down with a shoulder injury game three. They give Jackson Tyner a shot, didn't go well at Oklahoma, so in comes Jet Duffy, coming off a third consecutive 300-yard game. This one begins with a handoff to Sir Roderick Thompson, and he's got five or six into the arms of Texas's leading tackler, Joseph Osai. Get ready for two things, tempo, and Red Raiders want to play as fast as they have all season long, and a lot of handoffs to that man, Thompson, today. And that is saying something, because they always play fast. Over the top, they go here into one-on-one -on -one coverage, but incomplete. Good coverage, B.J. Foster on McLean Mannix. Now, Texas Tech for the 18th consecutive season is one of the top 10 passing offenses in the country. 
Texas defensively ranks 124th against the Pats out of the 130 teams. Well, they've gotten better as they've gotten healthier in the secondary. Looking at a third and four here. And a false start. A false start by number 78 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. Cooper Castleberry, by the way, Brock, 42 years as an official, 25 of those in the Big 12. This is his final one today. You just like saying that name. Cooper Castleberry. <laughs> it's a good one. So instead of a third down and four, third and nine for Texas Tech. Texas brings pressure. Duffy delivers a strike and a first down to the leading receiver for the Red Raiders, the Louisiana Monroe transfer, R.J. Turner. And I think for the Longhorn fans, that's been a familiar sight in that secondary, just unable to make a play on the ball. Quickly back on it. Play action on first down. Duffy lofting. Wants Mannix through his hands. They've taken a couple of shots to the Nevada transfer on this first drive. And you're right, the Red Raiders always go fast, but, uh, but I think David Yost wanted to move it even faster today to see if Texas can line up as that ball's just off the fingertips of Mannix. A Texas crew that, with all those moving pieces, has a hard time getting lined up at times defensively. Thompson with a hole. And a first down. You mentioned it, all 81 plays in last week's game. Sir Roderick Thompson was in there with Tejon Henry out. And Henry out again today, so going to be a bunch of Thompson. Injured player here for Texas Tech. Madison Akamano, the left guard. Making his 39th start. Three seniors on this offensive line for Texas Tech. I think a big reason why they've been in so many of these close games, been pretty good up front this season. And let's hope that Akamano can find his way back on the field. Back on Fox College Football, presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Here in Austin, Texas, as Madison Akamano leaves the game with an injury. Uh, the opening drive for Texas Tech and for Texas's defense and the D coordinator Todd Orlando. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Here it brings only three. That is a confident throw to Keyshawn Carter for a first down. Brandon Jones with a tackle after a gain of 13. Yeah, you call that formation into the boundary. Watch how many times today, and the boundary is the short side of the field. Texas Tech loves it. It simplifies the read, and you're right, a nice dart from Duffy. Looking to throw again, swings it outside, T.J. Vasher, another Texas Tech first down. Vasher, one of the top receivers, at least in terms of just raw talent, that you're going to find across the country, but he's missed a couple of games for a violation of team rules, came back last week in a limited role, and has had huge games against Texas throughout his career. Thompson, huge hold off the right side. And Texas Tech on the move here on their first possession. Yeah, to that point, Vasher, 13 receptions, three touchdowns over the last two seasons against Texas. He can be a, a difference maker. You saw it a week ago with Mims down at Baylor, getting those big guys into one-on-one -on -one battles with an undersized secondary. Yeah, Denzel Mims had seven catches for 125 yards last year. As that ball bounces to Carter last week, that is. Texas just really didn't have an answer. And the 24-10 Baylor win. Third and four coming up here. Quickly to Vasher, needs a couple of blocks. He'll get him, and a first down. Vasher inside the 15. And this long drive continues with a gain of 14. And once again, good tempo, but even better blocking here. Look at the big fellas get out in front of Vasher. He knows exactly what to do on third and four, get north and south. Duffy given time, floating to the end zone. That is Carter for a Texas Tech touchdown. An 11-play drive finishes off with a Carter score. And that was one flat drive defensively for Texas. Very little energy. Here's the corner route. 
right out of the slot. Keyshawn, one of the fastest Texas Tech Red Raiders. And just look at the space. That whole drive, to me, Joe, felt like Texas was just watching. There was very little stinger. There was very little attack. And credit Texas Tech and Jet Duffy marching it right down the field, putting seven on the board. 80 yards in 11 plays. They convert a couple of third downs. And Keyshawn Carter using some of that track speed. A high school track champ, but a member of Texas Tech's national champion track team has the touchdown, 7-0. Keyshawn Carter with the game's first touchdown, capping off that 11-play drive. 7-0 Texas Tech. Just Keyshawn's second of the season, but man, was that to script for David Yost, offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. Set the tempo, push the ball down the field, mix in enough run, and take advantage of a Texas secondary that actually has been pretty good this month of November, but man, did that feel stale on the defensive side of the ball. Jamison going to bring this one back. Deshaun Jamison with a nice return across the 35. Now we check in with Sam Farber in Los Angeles for a T-Mobile game break. Commonwealth Cup today in Virginia. UVA hosting number 24 Virginia Tech winner will play Clemson in the ACC title game. Virginia's Bryce Perkins calling his own number. 39-yard touchdown. They would miss the PAT, so it's 6-0. Joe and Brock been a one-sided rivalry. 15 straight for Vod Tech. Virginia trying to win against the Hokies for the first time since 2003. Looks like we got the short end of the weather stick compared to, uh, compared to Charlottesville today. Beautiful day there. Low 50s and rain here. Drive begins at the 36. Ingram. Deontay Ingram, the first down, crossing the 45. Let's bring in Bruce. Actually, hold Joe, on a moment, Joe, Bruce. Hold about? on a moment, Bruce. Some scuffle in there at the end of the play. First of all, to make sure the scuffle is cleaned up. Second of all, make sure Bruce isn't right in the middle of it. I think everybody's good. Bruce? Still the 47, first and 10. Joe, you're talking about Texas searching for answers. I asked Sam Ellinger about this. He goes, you know, it's really pretty hard to explain because it just doesn't make any sense why we're struggling like this. He said it's unfortunate that Colin Johnson's here, but he goes, you know what? Even without him, we're Texas. And here's a playmaker. <laughs> yeah, Duvernay really brought the lone playmaker they feel like they have less that they can count on. Yeah, the, the word you hear me use an awful lot is trust. Right? It's, it's a word that I learned the most in football playing quarterback. Trust between play caller. Trust between quarterback receivers and protection. Duvernay, the one guy that clearly Ellinger trusts, and I think you've seen them feed him the first two drives of the game because of it. 98th catch of the season for him leads the country. Sets up a first down at the 33, and Roshan Johnson lowers the shoulder and gets five. Yeah, this game's about us. Those were Coach Herman's words to us yesterday. It's about us. It's a shorter week. We're not going to go chasing ghosts. We're going to get back to the things that they feel like they do best. That is Duvernay. That's a little of the RPO game. And really for Sam, when he is going at his best, he's playing in rhythm and getting the ball out of his hand. Again, it's Johnson. He gets three stopped by Broderick Washington. Let's take a look at the one to watch, sponsored by Credit One Big. Devin Duvernay, 98 catches on the season. That's the most since Jordan Shipley's record 116 in 2009. On third and short, Johnson gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth down. That's a nice job by Texas Tech up front, but you see Texas coming right to the ball, and to me, this is absolute go zone. Quarterback sneak, initial surge not close. He didn't get it. A punt and a turnover on downs on the first two Texas possessions. Not even particularly close. Yeah, that low man wins, right? You can see Coach Patterson right there, the D coordinator. Texas Tech gets lower. They get underneath the Longhorns. There is nowhere for Sam to sneak it. And that's the kind of coach, the excitement Coach Matt Wells said. His team has felt. 
You know, these guys are loving to play. They're going to finish strong. And what a start for Texas Tech. Look at the interior in the pit right here. Look at Texas Tech. They all get underneath, right? They submarine right there. It stops that initial point of contact, but then the key right on these QB sneaks was to, to watch the rest of those secondary defenders come in and finish that pile. And Matt Wells loves it. His first season as the head coach after six very successful seasons at his alma mater, Utah State. You know, there's only been one Texas Tech coach that has beaten Texas in his debut season. And Texas went and hired the guy after the year. That's David <laughs> McWilliams in 1986. He went on to spend five years as the head coach here in Austin. But Matt, very excited, of course, about what he's got going. And he looks at how close these losses have been. And he says, makes him even more excited knowing that they've been that close already being a bowl team. Duffy given time, delivers to the sideline, and Keyshawn Carter has been his favorite target so far. The touchdown score has 15 in the first play just, here. Yeah, I'm just curious here if Texas is going to crank up the juice meter. That's beautiful footwork right there and another well-thrown ball. But the Longhorns love to be aggressive right now, and I think this tempo is taking them out of it. The ruling on the field was a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. So we'll take another look at this. Be close. We've learned the last couple weeks that call on the field is pretty important. And that initial call is it to catch. There's a little bobble at the very beginning, but I do think Keyshawn has his feet in bounds. And at least that right foot as he secures it. I don't think uh, Mr. Castleberry is going to miss this phase of the officiating. <laughs> He's around <laughs> long enough to know football, believe it or not, before replay and running over and working through all of the different angles they have. But you kind of felt this yesterday, right? Meeting with both staffs. You felt a Texas Tech staff and Matt Wells just positive energy. Even at four and seven, they're not going to a bowl game. And all of these close losses, and they all walked into our room last night, and you would have never imagined they were four and seven. Feels like guys are enjoying playing, that they're just kind of running out of time, unfortunately. They want to keep playing. And on the other side, man, you just felt at Texas just the level of disappointment. Right as we sat in that building right over there yesterday, and it was just a, uh, been a hard year. And I think in the first seven minutes or so, eight minutes of this game, you're feeling that. You're watching a Texas Tech team that's energized in this Longhorn group, especially defensively, that's just playing on their heels. Well, think about where each program came into the season, right? So where they've come After to this spot the from. review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So the call does stand. A first down reception for Carter. You've got Texas who had all these expectations preseason number 10 and then they got off to a good start they played toe-to-toe -to -toe with LSU yeah and they were four and one with that being the lone loss but they dropped four of six since Texas Tech meanwhile first year in a head coach's tenure expectations are never going to be sky high get it to Thompson on the edge nowhere to go tries to reverse field and may have something here Thompson into the clear first down into Texas territory turns nothing into a gain of 18. And he'll stay on the field for every single snap. All 81 of them a week ago, they're down their second and third tailbacks. And that guy's not coming off the field, an engine that never stops running. David Yost, the old coordinator, said in 27 years of coaching, he's never had a running back stay in the game the entire way. And even was asking his way into special teams late in the game. Awesome. From the 42 on a first and 10, Duffy looking to throw. He's given all day, heaves it down the sideline towards the end zone and incomplete, but a flag. Wanted Carter, who is defended by Jones. And I think that's going to be pass interference on Brandon Jones, the senior right there that is just watching. And you can see the hands on the hips. I think this tempo is affecting the Longhorns a little bit, as is the vertical shots. Pass interference by number 19 of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty. And an automatic first down. And that's Keyshawn once again, the just the speedster. And he's got a step on the senior Jones, and all he can do is reach and grab. 
You know, it's one thing to, to run tempo. It's another thing to run tempo and then take those vertical shots and make these guys run and run and run. They fake the swing. Duffy being pursued. Got rid of it just in time to the sticks in Azukama. First catch of the day for the redshirt freshman who has really come on. Yeah, I think you're feeling uh, this Jed Duffy saying, you know what, I put up 520 total yards on these guys a season ago, and he's playing with extreme confidence these first two series. And once again, Keyshawn dotting the sidelines. And you remember that, right? You remember as a quarterback, these guys were a team that I shredded last year. You remember a golf course that you feel good on the first hole? Like, yep, I birdied this hole versus one that you bogeyed, double bogeyed. Yes, <laughs> this is a team he had a bunch of success against a season ago. Looking to throw again. Is able to escape the pocket and scramble for a few yards. Tackle by the corner to Sean Jamison. Redshirt Jr. from Mansfield, Texas. Made three starts last year. One of those was against Texas, throwing for 444 yards and four touchdowns. He also ran for 80 yards in that game. And is a good runner, but they've limited him in that role just because there's not a whole lot behind him. All bets are off today, though. Week 12, there's nothing after. Bringing pressure on second down. Underneath they go to Vasher. Already with his third reception. Stop made by Kobe Boyce, third down. Yeah, how many times did Matt Wells talk about development to us yesterday? Development, development, development. That's going to be the essence of their program. No one doing it more this season than Duffy. Thompson bounces. First down. Thompson, touchdown. All Texas Tech so far in Austin. Wow. And that is all Mr. Sir Roderick right there as he gets outside toward Todd Orlando's defense. Two players, B.J. Foster, 25 on the edge. Osai, the linebacker, those two, uh, they lose containment. And Thompson feels it, he sneaks it, and he's got the burst to finish it. What a start for Texas Tech. Freshman kicker, Trey Wolf. Hooks that one through, and just like that, it is 14-0 Texas Tech. We got one team playing, Joe, and one team is watching. One team is making the plays in the run game, in the pass game, keeping plays alive, and the other team, well, they're watching, they're reaching, and they're not finding a way to finish, and because of it, these Red Raiders are up 14. The road team's owned this game the last five times. Texas Tech's starting to own it here in the first 15. Fox College Football is presented by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. And by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Red Raiders got in at about 6 o'clock last night and had a nice Thanksgiving dinner at the team hotel. Two drives, two scores for Texas Tech and an early 14-0 lead. And what is that chemical in Turkey that makes you sleepy? Uh, tryptophan. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's affecting the Longhorns here, but it certainly is not affecting Texas Tech. And it's not affecting Bruce Feldman. Guys, you're not kidding. I mean, I'm down here on the Texas sideline. It's completely lethargic. Guys with their hands on their hips. Guys just looking around. It's almost like they don't even realize a game is going on right now. <laughs> and, and, and Bruce, what happens when you get beat up? That's what happens when your body hurts, and Texas has a bunch of guys, and you see Cook there, he's out. Jalen Green is out. There's a bunch of them casted up, banged up. I mean, they're hurting. But so are the guys on the other side. I mean, Texas Tech is without their best defensive player. But they're rising to the occasion, and Texas, Texas is not right now. Sean Johnson with a nice run on first down. Got tripped up by Desmond Smith, but there's a flag in the backfield. And that's going to be a hold on the right guard, Angela, one of the other Longhorns that's banged up. Holding number 75 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Yeah, and Junior Angelau is a tough, tough cookie, but he's fighting through a knee injury and just oversteps against a defense as aggressive as these linebackers are. They're undersized, so there's no reason to be hyper-aggressive. You got the mass and the strength, but when you overstep in that kind of way, you allow Benson to get that half-step, and all you can do is reach. Moves it back to the 15, first and 20. 
Ellinger against a three-man rush. Underneath Johnson. Quickly swarmed. And he gets a gain of five. Desmond Smith, Xavier Benson there for the tackle. Yeah, just compare and contrast the end of that play where you see five black helmets running onto the scene, right? That they are looking to finish Sam Ellinger in these Longhorns versus what we witnessed on the really the two opening drives of that Longhorn defense where you just did not see that kind of juice. Second down and 15, continue to drop eight into coverage. So Ellinger with time. Once Malcolm Epps, who goes up and gets it. Given a bigger roll because of the injury to Colin Johnson. Here he takes advantage for a gain of 30. And this is a big time play. It starts with protection. Texas Tech rushes three. Sam knows it. And this is, I said to you earlier about trust. That is a throw where you're trusting your big wide out to go up into double coverage and come down with it. Jake Smith gets a block, gets a first down. Those are the plays they didn't have the last two weeks on the road. Those are the plays in up at Ames and, and last week in Waco, these Longhorns could not and did not make. Let's see if that explosive ignites this offense. Pressure coming. Picked up. Ellinger for Epps again. A flag down. They're going to get Desmond Smith. And just back to that deep shot to Epps earlier. Joe, that is a throw. Pass interference by number four of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And you'll see a very different structure here. It's not the drop eight. It's man-to-man, -man, and that's just simply too much contact there from Smith. But that throw to Epps into double coverage. You let that go as a QB, and, and you know it's a contested ball. And you're hoping at that moment, Ellinger, is that your receiver's going to get it or nobody gets it. And those are the kind of plays Tom Herman wants Ellinger to make. He's got to pull the trigger and trust, even if they are inexperienced, they can finish on the other end. Yeah, there's the key word, right? Trust. Hope and then trust. Looks like developing some. And Malcolm Epps. First down from the 18. Pressure coming again. It's picked up again. Ellinger delivers. He's got Brennan Eagles with a flag down. Sure Perhaps get some separation. Yeah. This may be offensive yeah. pass interference when you see the arms of Eagles extend. Pass interference by number 13 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty and still third, first down. You, know, you can get away with a flipper, right? Kind of like in basketball. You can get away with a, you know, using your forearm, but once your arms extend like that, right? And both guys are hand fighting, but what that official is going to look at is do you extend those arms to help gain an offensive advantage? I think you do, and thus the penalty brings it way back to the 33. Already the fourth penalty on Texas, one of the most penalized teams in the country. Ellinger looking downfield again. He'll tuck it and run to the 19. Defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, Keith Patterson, in his first season following Matt Wells from Utah State. No matter where he's been, they've been aggressive. No matter where he's been, they've forced a lot of turnovers. In fact, led the country in takeaways last year at Utah State. On second down, into the short side, here comes Johnson, who gets thrown down, but able to finish fourth. That's some of the first signs of fight and life from Texas. Yeah, this is a big deal, because the yards after contact the last couple weeks just were not there, and that's six, seven, eight yards after contact it makes a monumental difference. And when you don't have it against Baylor and you don't have it against the Cyclones, well, you don't come away with a win out on the road. That's well done by the true freshman. Makes it third and two. I'm going to guess pressure and man-to-man -man coverage. Usually a pretty safe bet from Keith Patterson's defense. They are bringing it. It's a quarterback run. Ellinger with a first down. Ellinger! With a touchdown. The 
The first first quarter touchdown for Texas in five games. And runs through an arm tackle in the backfield to really set it up here. That is QB power. You block down. You pull Angelau, the big right guard, around. You just let that size and strength come downhill. 16 rushing touchdowns a year ago for Sam, a huge part of his game, just his sixth this season. But man, did this stadium and this team need that kind of touchdown effort. And so first Texas touchdown in the first quarter in five games, first Ellinger rushing touchdown in five games. Cameron Dicker with the extra point. And it gets blocked. That was Zach McPherson flying off of the edge to get it. Back to Austin in 30 seconds. The Penn State transfer right here. It is all about speed and then angle for Zach McPherson. He gets off right on the jump. And after a really nice drive by the Longhorn offense, you can see the disgust in Tom Herman's body language right there. Nice drive that you said needed badly after the sluggish start. Keyshawn Carter, Carter receiving touchdown. Brings his kick back to the 22. Boy, what a day we've got coming up tomorrow on Fox. All beginning with Big Noon Saturday, game of the week. It is the game, Ohio State and Michigan. And then the Fighting Irish out in Palo Alto. We will be in Stillwater for the 114th meeting between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. That is one heck of a slate of games. Sign me up. Good news, you already are. Oh, good. Yep. Good. From the 22-yard line, Texas Tech back out it on offense. Two drives and two touchdowns. Thompson being chased by Colburn. Able to turn the corner. Osai finishes him off. And it's second down. Well, let's see if the Texas is going to tackle a little bit here. I'm going to guess that Todd Orlando got in the ear of some of these players, especially the more veteran players, that you've just got to bring some edge. And, and this tempo right now, it slowed down some of the pressure. And I think Texas got to get back to doing what they do best, and that's blitz. Play action over the middle. That's behind Carter and incomplete. Coverage from Caden Stearns, third and eight. And Tech loves that scheme. They call it a little power read scheme as Stearns is not able to get up. Stearns, another one of those Longhorn defenders that has just been banged up all year. Missed a month with a knee and still not close to 100%. I think it was friendly fire, his own teammate. Adelia Dayaway comes in and ball just behind Keyshawn. You can see the collision between the two Longhorn defenders and Stern's the worst for it. Face mask helmet there to a spot that is not really protected. Take another 30 second break. Back in a moment. Now, Caden Stearns, whose return from that knee injury was so important for the improvement down the stretch of this Texas defense, leaving the game under his own power. Yeah, we saw these guys a month ago up in Fort Worth. There was no Stearns, there was no Brown. It was a beat up crew then. They have battled through some of those injuries all season long. But Texas Tech's going to have no pity because they have as well. It's a pretty big play here. I just think for the energy and for this defensive group, got to get off the field. Duffy in trouble and sacked, and they will get off of the field. Malcolm Roach on his senior day brings Duffy down, and it's fourth down. Moro Ojimo in there as well. And so Texas starting to get things going after a sluggish first few minutes. 14-6 to the second on this Thanksgiving weekend at Austin.
ready for the second quarter on Fox College Football presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Your first half stats. Texas Tech in front 14-6. Texas actually outgaining the Red Raiders. On pace for about a thousand yards. Yeah. Between the two up and down the field. It's a little more Big 12-like. Yeah, a little more than what we've seen from Baylor the last well, in the entirety of this season playing tremendous defense. Across the league improvements defensively. Alex Grinch, of course, in his first season at Oklahoma, overhauling that defense. Back to get it is Brandon Jones. Shakes free of a couple of men and then brought down by the nose guard, Jalen Hutchings. This series goes back to 1928 between these programs. You mentioned it earlier, five straight wins by the road team. Texas Tech has never won three in a row in Austin. So a lot of road success and a lot of close games. Four consecutive meetings decided by one score. Quite a bit of offense. Yeah. Not quite like the Bedlam matchup we have tomorrow night where the offense has been extraordinary, but let's score some points to win this one today. Texas went 75 yards for a touchdown in the previous drive. Here they hand it off to Roshan Johnson, the converted quarterback. The point where he had never played running back in his life. He appears to be injured at the end of this run. Now this is really tough. The pile comes underneath Roshan with just back-to-back -back tremendous runs. Right, that is all that leg strength. I think you're going to see that left leg get tucked underneath as the pile comes towards him. Crowd not liking what they see to Marcus Fields there finishing that tackle. The Johnson one week before the opener this year they were dealing with injuries at running back. He actually called Tom Herman said hey can we talk. And it was his idea. Decided to try him there as an emergency option, but he's become a legitimate running back option for him. Take a break as they take a look. So they help Roshan Johnson off of the field. Keontae Ingram started the game for Texas, but remember he was dealing with an ankle injury, so he at this point is unavailable. And they go to Daniel Young, who's got a total of five carries this season. And a touchdown last week with one second left. Injury riddled season himself. There's a, a running back room that's just been ravaged by injuries this year. First down from the 41. Hellinger given time. Steps into the throw. Into the flats. That's complete. Couple of tackles broken by Marcus Washington. And the true freshman extends it inside the 40. Third career reception for the St. Louis native goes for 15. And a nice job here by Ellinger to get through his read. He wanted to push the ball down the field, but ultimately the crumbs lead to the cookie. You've got to take that underneath throw. And a tremendous job by the true freshman. One of his more dynamic plays of the entire season, catching a runner. Young's first touch, gain of two, submarine by Fields. I mean, that's the beauty of this now. When you're the third string running back, here's your chance. Right, a lot of times over the course of the season, you're a backup to backups and you're just waiting. And, oh, man, it's such a grind. Well, here you go. Injuries in front of you. You've got an opportunity to break tackles and make your mark in the senior in the season finale. And there is Ingram. Again, dealing with the ankle injury that he suffered on the long run at Baylor last week. Second down. They bring five this time. Ellinger trying to beat it. Wants Duvernay. Adjusts. And he makes the catch. What a play by Devin Duvernay. First and goal. And that's all set up at the line of scrimmage. You heard Ellinger say kill, kill, kill. This was two plays. This was the shot play. If you got man-to-man -man coverage, an excellent job by Duvernay to get the knee in. And a really well done job by the junior quarterback getting to the play he wanted to take the shot down the field. It's Young into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. So Daniel Young's second touchdown on his seventh carry this year. 
And after the missed extra point from him in the first touchdown, they'll go for two here. Explosive plays. Something the Longhorns really struggled with in the month of November. Kind of dried up. And that really was the difference on those two drives. It was Epps on the previous touchdown drive and the double coverage. That time it was Duvernay versus single coverage. And I think the right move here for Texas to go for two. And four receivers to the wide side of the field and have one-on-one -on -one with Malcolm Epps to the top of the screen. Timeout taken by Matt Wells. Texas Tech calls their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Well, you mentioned the explosive plays going away. Seven total over the last three games, if you're qualifying that by 25 plus. They were averaging five explosive plays per game before that. Yeah. And some of that's Colin Johnson, right, early in the year. Yeah, he's a trusted guy. A really nice job by Young to run through the arm tackle. But you'll hear quarterbacks, especially at the NFL level, right? We had a good little mic call there. Of Sam at the line of scrimmage saying, kill, kill, kill. When you're playing a team as aggressive as Texas Tech, you want to come up to that line, and instead of like this whole huge audible to get out of your shot play, and then they'll check out of their aggressive look, instead you say, no, in the huddle, here's two plays. Here's the first play, and we'll kill to the second play. So then all I got to say is kill, 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 and they're not going to get out of their pressure defense. You can take advantage of that one-on-one. -on -one. It's exactly what Herman and Ellinger are able to execute to the senior Duvern Duvernay. Second two-point conversion this season for the Longhorns, successful on their first. Retreating, lofting, Duvernay ties the game. From an ugly 14-0 hole to locked at 14 early in the second. That's three years of relationship between those two. They've been throwing each other a ton. Well, more than anybody else this season with Duvernay over 100 catches now on the year. That's all timing, anticipation, and a big two-pointer to tie it up. Fox College football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Handing off big savings to you. That's a big drum. That is a really big drum. And this is a tie game. That's a big flag and everything's bigger in Texas, as they like to say. Danny Young came into the game as the third running back, but Ingram dealing with the ankle. Bruce Feldman reports Roshan Johnson a lower leg injury. And so Daniel Young into the game and gets the touchdown. He'll bring this one out. Douglas Coleman. Texas Tech to start at the 20. The beauty of football, Joe, is, well, you can go super fast like Texas Tech does, or with a th third-year starter quarterback like Sam Ellinger, you can really control the game at the line of scrimmage. And I told you earlier about his kill, kill. Listen to this. That simple. That simple. And everybody knows what we're going to get to. Duffy finding a hole. It's Carter. Brought down by Stearns in a day away. So 20 years ago, you go, easy, easy, black 24. You make all these calls, and then the defense changes. You don't want the defense to change. You found their cards. You want to play that hand, and you want to kill it and take a shot down the field. That was well done. Second and one, bubbled it outside. All the way to the fifth catch, Keyshawn Carter. First down, crossing the 35, and here's Bruce Feldman. Guys, Caden Stearns has returned to the game. He was refitted for a brace on his ribs, a pad, but he's been wincing in pain, and he is hobbling around on the field right now. Like so many of these Longhorns, especially in the secondary, continuing to play through injuries. On the slant, the tight end, Dante Thompson. Right, and then look at this other philosophy. There's no kill, we're not gonna do anything. We are going to dictate, we're gonna do it by just getting up and, and running these plays as fast as you can so you get the defense, look at them, barely lined up. I mean, that is about as fast as you could possibly go. It's Thompson for a gain of three. Jones and Obershone making it third down. And Thompson, who they cannot afford to lose. Again, he played all 81 snaps last week. He is slow getting up here. 
there's a little different effort compare and contrast two three longhorns around the tackle and that's a low shot there by Jones getting his head out of the way the shoulder pad to the thigh and you can see the very tough Thompson is down and you're right with number two and three down that means more than likely Jacks Welch a high school safety out of the Dessa with 300 and some tackles as a safety in high school probably the next option a running back for you the options behind Thompson of course Welch included a total of four career carries he's got all of them and he's in there in a running situation perhaps third and two They will throw against pressure. Duffy off his back foot. One on one coverage over the shoulder. Carter, Shed Stearns, Keyshawn Carter, first and goal. Boy, the sophomore out of the Woodlands putting together a career day. He's got 44 here. Yeah, some Keyshawn may be watching this one going, throw me the ball. That's what you do. If it's one on one, they can't cover me with my speed. He goes up over the top. Nice throw. Stearns can't make the play. Carter came into the game with 153 yards total this season. He's got 110 in his first half, and there is Stearns continuing to feel it. Yeah, and Bruce just reported about him. You can put a pad on all you want, but that whole body for Caden Stearns is aching, and credit Texas Tech for getting the one-on-one -on -one they wanted. That is their speedster against an aching, hurting safety, and yeah, Keyshawn, a breakout game. Yeah, no question a career high. Almost double in his season total. We're not even halfway through this second quarter. I mean, you're talking elite 10, when 10, 300 meters, that is elite, elite stuff. As you see, Sir Roderick in the conversation, my guess is if he is able to go at all, he'll put that helmet back on and find a way to get back on the field and help his team. Oh, yeah, the third string running back score for Texas and Daniel Young. Now you got a backup running back in Jax Welch in the game with the ball at the two for Texas Tech. I'll see you third stringer, and I may raise you our fourth stringer. Right. We got no Tejon Henry today. No Armand Shine. So really, probably the fifth stringer. Somewhere in Odessa, Jax's parents are saying, get him the ball. They're actually out. Split out, and they bring him in here. He's got it. And shot down by Moro Ojimo. Wow, how about that? Here comes Thompson, and you were right. He can walk, you know, find a way in. Texas takes time out at the last moment. There was nobody over T.J. Vasher, and it's not like they were hiding him. No, you're going to see him right here, and this is one, instead of Duffy looking to the sideline, you've just got to have a call, right? And it just get up there and snap it immediately. You're going to see here, they're going through the mechanics. He looks to the sidelines. Get out of that, man. <laughs> that is where you've got to make that check right away. We talk about the checks on the other side, right? That's just a, an overall awareness of everything around you. And you can see it. Oh, that's my bad. Right? Just look out there. And you've got a quick call right to that line. And just hurry, hurry. He said, How in the world does that happen from Texas's perspective, though? Lots of personnel. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's no Jalen Green, there's no Anthony Cook, there's no Stern. So you got a bunch of new personnel. You got a group that's probably more focused on, on their blitz and their pressure there around the line of scrimmage. But yeah, that's one if you're Jet, you're going to learn from and just got to get the ball out. Second down and goal out of the timeout. Thompson finds a crease to the goal line. Where do they spot him? A little bit short. And it's third and goal. This is a crew that will run it and will run it and will run it down here. It's just short. Thompson again. He gets stopped again. And it's fourth down as Osai and Roach shut him down. Yeah, it was a little bit of inside penetration too, Joe, by Jeffrey McCulloch, the linebacker. And Roach, they get into the backfield. 
And Osai able to clean it up out on the edge. And it is McCulloch who has dealt with a shoulder injury all season who is slow getting up. And he shot the gap right there, right? I mean, it is, you know what's coming. This group loves to run between the tackles inside the five yard line. And you're going to see him come into the backfield. He lunges with that left arm, that shoulder that has been banged up all season long. And the senior Roach knows that was a pretty critical tackle for loss. Now, I don't know, it's been a while, Joe, since I've had a, a board that looks quite like this one with so many guys banged up on both teams. A lot of red pen. And a shorter week. Fourth down and goal. They had it first and goal from the two. They'll throw it. Vassar can't get it. And Texas slams the door at the goal line. Kenyatta Watson finds himself in the game in a big spot and comes up with a play. Yeah, the true freshman, you just never know when your numbers are going to be called. But the true freshman plays it pretty well. He gets his hands up right there at the very end to knock it out of the hands of Asher and save six. Inspired stuff from Todd Orlando's bunch at the goal line, stopping Texas Tech when they had it first and goal from the two. It was a sleepy start. They've still given up some explosives, which you're going to do in, in Orlando's pressure defense. But ultimately, they get down there inside the three, and you're right, man. Tremendous effort and a really nice play by the freshman Watson. The trip to Finn wore off, and now they are really <laughs> good. That is a flag that's going to move this inside the one you might have noticed Roshan Johnson back in the game at running back for the Longhorns a false start by number 18 of the offense the penalty is half the distance to the goal and it's still first down it's true freshman Jared Wiley Texas back-to-back -back touchdown drives first two drives there was a punt and a turnover on downs but they found something yep. these last couple yeah, and a sack and that penalty set the first two back and the explosive set up the next two Trying to get a little bit of breathing room here. Johnson to the two. It was Chip Kelly, I believe, chatting with him over the last couple of years. And a lot of his data studied there at UCLA and the difference of drives when you just get one explosive. If you get two explosives on a play of 15 plus, you're going to score a field goal or points 90% of the time. And Coach Herman knows it is just too hard to sustain long drives. You've got to find those explosives. Keep it on the ground, and Johnson gets brought down in the backfield by Jalen Hutchings, the redshirt freshman from Forney, Texas. Played a little running back himself in high school. I like this dude, man. He plays hard. You said it earlier. You're going to see the penetration right in the backfield. He covered the punt. Yeah. He was down on punt coverage, 700 yards, six rushing touchdowns for the, well, they list him at six foot, about 5'11", 290 pounds. Does an awesome job with his leverage getting underneath the pads and a big third and nine. A low snap. Ellinger picks it up and throws behind Malcolm Epps. And so Texas will have to punt out of its own end zone here, unable to do anything after the goal line stand. Yeah, credit Texas Tech right there, right? I mean, this has been kind of a back and forth. You throw a punch, we throw a punch. Tech right out the gate with a couple touchdowns. Texas answers. And that's what you need your defense to do when your offense gets stopped in a situation like that. Part of the reason you go for it is you count on this, a three and out, and get the ball back good field position. That is the first incompletion from Sam Ellinger. And Agar... Limited room here to get rid of it. The high but short punt. Shook Swabuku. That is off his foot, but a flag down as John Burt got his hands on it. So a few things to sort out here. Texas Tech was able to get on it. Myler Royals with the recovery on a 36-yard punt, but again, there is a flag down. Like 39, Montrella Stell made contact. Kick catch Kibuku. interference by number 39 of the kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it'll be first down. Yeah, the blocked PAT earlier. A short punt followed up by just that contact right there. Can't do it.
And he's seen way too much of these kinds of things this season. Almost eight penalties per game on Texas. Yeah. That's the most in the conference. 115th in the country in that category. Well, they couldn't punch it in from the two, but winning the field position battle right now, and beginning from the 24, as Duffy gets rid of that at the last moment, RPO to the max. <laughs> the run pass yes. option he took right to the last moment and threw incomplete. And Duffy can run. 80 yards rushing against these Longhorns last year, but they have throttled that way back because of the concerns behind him. Here comes pressure on second down. He wants one on one in the end zone, and Ezukama has it. Touchdown, Texas Tech. And you see the difference here between the touchdown and the near miss on the previous series. Watch as it come and go up and use those strong hands. Right, it felt like Vasher waited on the little fade throw in the end zone. As Akama does not, he goes up and you see the four star. The guy they're awfully excited about who's grown and developed this season make a tremendous high point catch. Did it against Texas's top cover man in Deshaun Jamison, but he gives up five inches to Azukama. Chad Duffy giving his guys an opportunity in one-on-one -on -one today, and so far, it's been good decisions. Fox College football is sponsored by Allstate, reminding you the football season is mayhem. Now by Coors Light, made to chill, celebrate responsibly. Our wonderful production crew had a wonderful dinner last night. This is a crew doing two games in two days in two states, away from their family. On Thanksgiving weekend, didn't realize how good looking the crew was until you got to see them all together. Well, they, they got it on video, got to put <laughs> yes. a nice filter on it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Azukama's touchdown has Texas Tech back in front, 21-14. You're going to like a little of the football that got coming up here for you in a second because that play, it's pretty remarkable what the Red Raiders do offensively in their play-action game. Short kick, fair catch. What do you got? And here's what I mean. Because many times you run a play, right? A run play. And this is going to be what they call their power action. He throws the shot here, but you're going to pull the guard and run this action, right? They call it a little power read. Well, you know, it's a nice play and everything, and it's a touchdown. And then you go back and you wonder, okay, well, when do they run this play? The actual run play where he pulls and you give it and run. Where have I seen that? Never. Not one time. As David Yost told us last night, they run this play action concept because, well, Jet loves it. But not one time do they run the corresponding run play. And yet the defenses don't really figure it out. You don't really need it. And there's a lot of studies that show you don't even need necessarily the run play to run the play action off of it and find success. And you can ask Texas Tech about that. On first down, Ellinger looking deep. Duvernay, bang! Texas responds. And we're an extra point away from being tied again. 75-yard strike. What'd you say? Boom. Bang, boom. Goes yeah, the dynamite. And you know when you're really fast? It's when you can stumble. Watch Duvernay. He stumbles right there, and he's still gone. See ya. My guy's just faster than your guy, and Adrian Fry. Now he's a corner, and he's got good speed, but he didn't got the elite, crazy speed that Duvernay does as he closes that cushion, runs right by him, and you know what? If you're even, you're leaving. Yeah, and he was. I mean, you said, and, and this is a guy who's done a lot in his Texas career as a football player, but he would tell you still that his proudest athletic achievement, 100-meter dash champion in Texas in high school, that is a big deal. And he showed off some of that speed, a 75-yard score, the longest Texas pass play of the year. Not a bad way for Devin Duvernay to get his 100th catch of the season, the first player to do that in the Big 12 since Lockett and White did it in 2014. And I like what you're saying here, and if you're a Texas fan, you do too. That was the connection you wanted. They've had it. And I think over the last month, Ellinger has not been this confident. Keyshawn Carter to the 25. They asked him to cut it loose, right? Tom Herman yesterday, hey, Sam, just play, man. Have fun. Don't overthink it. If you see it, bang, cut it loose and throw it. 
and especially to Devin. He has just got the elite game-changing speed. But there have been three or four of those today. I don't know if Sam throws those the last couple weeks. Right, Tim Beck was pretty honest with us in the game we called against TCU. He had a pick where he anticipated and went the wrong way. And really since then, he's not been anticipating it like he has this afternoon. That's off of the hands of Turner, an incomplete second and ten. And I always hated hearing that. Oh, have fun. Have fun. Just cut it loose. Yeah, I know. I'm trying. Well, right? okay. And Sam Ellinger is a thinker, right? He analyzes, sometimes overanalyzes. You were the same way. Yes. It can be what makes you what you are as a talented quarterback, but it can also be a detriment. Second and ten, a draw play. Thompson, not much there. Well, it allows you to control the game at the line of scrimmage, right? And handle and process all that information and, and get to your kill plays and everything else. But yes, it can also paralyze you by over analysis. And that was really the theme this week. It's about us. Get back to who we are and what we do best. And these last three possessions, three or four, have been pretty darn good. And the rain really coming down as hard as it has today. In front of this third and eight, Duffy out of the pocket delivers incomplete. Yeah, ball just gets away from Duffy, and that's the difference between just the drop back game and a little bit of that play action, as you do see. And this was forecast, and I don't think it's going anywhere. Both these QBs are going to have to throw a wet ball, something that Duffy did over the course of the week, but that one flew high and wide and a pretty good three and out by the Longhorns defense. Short punt from Austin McNamara, who has been the best freshman punter in the country this year. And thanks to that bounce, another pretty good one here. And we told you he was one to watch start this game and Devin Duvernay a few more receptions 100 on the season including the 75 yard touchdown and it was from the very jump right that was the run pass option a little slant run we saw him on a jet sweep here was the one on one the inside vertical he's caught an awful lot with the little bubble screens this year the two point conversion perfect timing and execution but ultimately you have a home run threat you give him a 3 0 count and let him just swing away and that's exactly what Devin did with that explosive play and man have there been a bunch of them here in this first half on the sideline to open this drive first and ten from the 26 Texas looking for its first lead of the day Roshan Johnson bottled up uh, tripped up by Xavier Benson and Duvernay a team captain was named a team captain mid-season really do you see that Tom Herman said one other time in his coaching career he's done that and Duvernay leading by example he's a quiet guy who Tom Herman said truthfully probably not the most likable guy always plays so mean so angry but guys admire and respect the way that he does that salty uh -huh. back to back runs third and short A little feast or famine right. Texas Tech, they love to bring the pressure, but you get hit the way they've gotten hit on a couple of these drives. I think you're going to see Keith Patterson just try to just keep it in front of you a little bit. You're without your best player, Brooks, your middle linebacker. Yes, you are aggressive, but you also want to make Texas try to earn it a little bit. Third and three, pressure's picked up, and Eagles underneath first down. You saw Ellinger using that analytical side to his benefit, yes. navigating pre-snap. Yep, exactly, trying to get a good read on what you're going to get, and ultimately you're going to get the one-on-one. -on -one. You want That's a nice catch on a wet day, watching these receivers. Not just the quarterback's got to handle the wet ball, the receivers do as well. Heavy dose of Roshan Johnson on this drive, unable to break the tackle, Rico Jeffers. Well, Texas Tech this week, wet ball drills every day and several different drills Texas didn't do a whole lot of that and haven't played in poor conditions this season and I'm somewhat torn on that right because I, I, I never found great benefit dunking the ball in a, in a bucket of water it's always different and as much as they change balls in and out as well I think sometimes you got to be careful to the psyche uh, you know uh, of working that and just treating it like hey man some of the adversity you've got to overcome probably different for each guy yeah Second and eight. 
Ellinger has been on fire. He even went down the field, but a little bit out in front of Eagles, who is defended by the true freshman Alex Hogan, and it's third and eight. On to the second incompletion. Nine of 11. He's already thrown for more yards than he did at Baylor last week. Yeah, this is the guy that we saw in September and October. The guy that went toe to toe with LSU, right? That kept him within a one possession game there. He's just back to being the aggressor. He's spread it around. Those nine completions have gone to seven different players. Empty set on third down. Only a three-man rush. Tight windows to peer through. He finds an opening, has a first down. And again, it's Brennan Eagles picking it up on third down. You know, one of the differences, a lot of the teams in the Big 12 are running three down. But the difference the last two weeks on the road, that three-man rush was getting in Sam's face. It was impacting and affecting him. That is why Baylor is so good this year. Right? Why are they elite defensively? They can rush three and affect it. That three-man rush doesn't get anywhere near Sam. And he gets the big third down conversion. Daniel Young back in the game of running back. On first down from the 49, he's got it. Gain of two, Adam back to tackle. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned. Rob Stone and the guys are live in Ann Arbor. State Farm halftime show. Charles Woodson going to join the crew. Take it through first half highlights. Look ahead to the huge day on Fox tomorrow. Inside four minutes, eight play on this Texas drive. Ellinger navigates in the pocket and finds room for a first down inside the 40. Well, there you go, Brock. When it's not there, tuck it and go. That's right. The sack on the opening drive, and outside of that, either the ball has been out of Sam's hand, or look at this, he is now looking to use the other strength he has, and that is his ability to run. He takes a pretty good shot, too, at the end of that as his head slams into the wet turf. Taking a bunch of those, those 33 sacks this season, and as aggressively as he runs it, quick trigger to Apps. Good first down game. You know, what else stands out today, maybe as much as any game we've seen this year, is the amount of communication at the line of scrimmage. It's Adam Beck that is down. And remember, he's playing really in Jordan Brooks' spot, who is out with a shoulder injury, a labrum injury. He's gutted through the last month and ultimately could not go today. So, man, so many moving parts on that side of the ball defensively. Adam Beck, a transfer from Minnesota, has been so valuable for the Red Raiders this season. You mentioned him playing linebacker today. I mean, this is a guy who started his college career as a corner, transitioned to a kind of a box safety nickel role, but playing linebacker again today with Brooks out. Yeah, and welcome to the Big 12 here that Coach Wells has stepped into with a lot of interchangeable parts. And when you have it, it's nice to have this group up front. Just been listening a bunch to Sam and, and you could just listen to Shackelford right in the middle of the captain the amount of communication going on when you got a group that, that varies its its fronts that blitzes as much as Texas Tech does when you can block them up as you've seen there's opportunities to hammer them down the field a nice job of communication up front from the 31 second down four Johnson Nice cut to get free, and then a stiff arm, a nerd, a McPherson, first down to the 21. Boy, Roshan Johnson running hard today. And McPherson is down after this run, and these were the yards you were not getting over the last two weeks. Baylor was making that tackle at the line of scrimmage, and there was zero after contact. The Cyclone, seven, eight times, Roshan got onto the corners or safeties and just had a challenging time on that field of making people miss and running through tackles. Hidden yards today. There's been explosive yards. Two Red Raiders down, actually, is McPherson on the tackle. And Broderick Washington, their captain. I don't know if they're going to have anybody left My when this thing is said and done. Bruce, did you bring your pads? <laughs> uh, I did not, but uh, it's a little update here on Rashawn Johnson. Obviously, we saw him get injured before, come back. 
The team loves how physical he is. They love his leadership skills that he's shown even as a young player. One of the things the staff has really been on him on this game that I've noticed is yelling, pick up your feet. There's been a couple of times where he's gotten tripped up in the hole, but when he gets out, man, he's physical. It's just the little detail things, because as you guys said earlier, he hadn't played running back in a long, long time, and he's really, for lack of a better term, just getting his feet wet. Yeah, and you see the brace on the left shoulder. These freshmen especially, they love to play early, but the beating that they take over the course of a season takes a toll and the beating Texas taken here in the first half Keith Patterson I don't know who he's got left personnel wise long drive continues as Texas looks for its first lead of the day from the 20 Ellinger scans the field through his progression to the end zone and incomplete over Duvernay covered by Fry second and ten so what do you do here if you're Texas Tech Right, your very identity is to be hyper aggressive. That's what you want to do. Jordan Brooks, your middle linebacker, 20 tackles for loss. Keith Patterson, I'll quote him again. Victory goes to the aggressor. But can you really do it with so many different people down? Can you disguise the pressures? Right, so much of their pressure comes out of disguise, right? Hitting that opponent in the back. We've got so many new pieces and new, new roles and inexperience doing so. Hard to be aggressive. 12th well, play of the Texas drive is another run on the read. It's Ellinger inside the 10, inside the 5. First and goal with flags down. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask by number 23 of the defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. That's Demarcus Fields, the corner that's going to come in right there. That's a good call by the umpire. And then that's the X-Factor killer. Well, we can talk about scheming and doing everything else, but then when you've got the quarterback that can pull the ball down as well, a huge difference in this first half. Schellinger, in addition to the 218 yards through the year, has run for 64. On just eight carries, and with a minute and a half, sets up first down and goal inside the two. Johnson in. Touchdown, Texas. And they lead for the first time. the right guard here on Galau. that is just two grizzly bears in the woods man him and Broderick Washington the senior right at the point of attack where you've got to win you can't get blown back off the ball even a stalemate allows your freshman running back to put his pads down and finish well done and so the Longhorns fall into a 14 nothing hole and wake up from a bit of a turkey hangover and they've scored 28 of the last 35 back in 30 seconds Four touchdowns on the last five Texas drives. This one brought five minutes, 36 seconds, last 13 plays. Yeah, and Tom Herman said it to us yesterday. He's got to be willing to be patient. That, that as he self-evaluated and looked at it, those three and four yard carries to Johnson, they will set up Ellinger's run. They will set up those body blows to a worn out defense on that drive and allow you to finish. Good patience there more than anything. Longhorn showing they can do it explosively and a little bit more patiently when they have to. Kick is squibbed and taken to the 25. Well, Texas Tech will begin at the 30-yard line. Time now for more than a house. Sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. It started in 1924 and seated 27,000 Texas Memorial Stadium and has expanded a time or two since then. Now seating more than 100,000. And named after the legendary coach Daryl K. Royal in the late 90s. Expansion going on currently in the south end zone. Be completed in time for the 2021 football season. Pretty darn good turnout considering where Texas is at six and five, considering the weather today. As Duffy picks up the low snap and gets dragged down by Taquan Graham. Well, two timeouts here, and Texas Tech will get the ball to begin the second half.
Less than a minute on second and nine. Duffy lofting down the sideline. As he come on. Makes the catch beating Jamison again. The ultimate team game comes down how many times to these one-on-one -on -one situations out on the perimeter. Looks like it's coming, maybe a little banged up. He did it high pointing. This time he does it full extension running through that catch. Trey Wolf's career long is from 45 yards. They need to get to the 28 for that. Into a tight window, he delivers a strike for Carter. And another Texas Tech first down. Jet Duffy having quite a day. So just like that, they're to the 24. Duffy looking downfield again. Coverage is tight, so he checks it down. Thompson back to the line of scrimmage and stopped by Jamison. They'll have to use the timeout with 32 seconds. Poor linesman can hardly get up and down the field today. Right. <laughs> Coming up at the half, State Farm halftime show. Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, Urban Meyer, and Charles Woodson joining them today. I don't think Urban is going to get quite as nice a reception this week as he did with the crew down in Columbus last week. No, I, I don't think so. That school up north, no. Pretty cool little relationship going on today, too, and that is Matt Wells, head coach now at Texas Tech. We talked about Todd Orlando on the other side. Orlando coordinated for two years with Matt, two really good years up at Utah State. They remain friends, family friends, kids. It was funny talking to Todd yesterday. They usually text every week, and Todd said, I was waiting for him. <laughs> he never texted, I never texted, but they got a chance to catch up pregame. Pretty cool. Two men that respect each other an awful, awful lot. Out of the timeout. That is out of the hand of Duffy. It's a live ball, and Texas has it. Recovered by Marquez Bimage. Well, oh, there's your wet ball drill. And that's really one of the first times we've seen so much of this moisture and rain affect either quarterback. This ball just going to come out of Duffy's hands before he goes to throw. Does a nice job stepping up in the pocket and then whoop. That is a terrible feeling as a quarterback. You do so many things well, you step up, you're going to check it down, more than likely get a first down. And that ball disappears. 22 seconds. Texas has two timeouts. Looks like they're going to be content here, probably partially because of what you just saw, the conditions. Uh, we're taking a knee. Going into the break with the lead after they trailed this game 14 0 and looked, frankly, bad. And falling into that 14 0 hole looked uninspired. Completely different team from that point forward. And a very different quarterback than the one we've watched out on the road the last couple weeks. Jet Duffy will have a little more say in this for sure in the second half, as will the weapons of Texas Tech that moved it up and down the field. And they'll have the ball to begin the second half. 28-21, stay tuned. Rob Stone and the guys in Ann Arbor for the State Farm Halftime Show after these messages. College football presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans here on a rainy Friday afternoon in Texas. Look at your Geico first half stats. It was 14 0 Texas Tech at one point. Texas rallied leads 28 21 as we get ready to start half number two. The Minister of Culture in the house, Matthew McConaughey, getting the guys ready to go on that Texas sideline. Is <laughs> hope he comes up here and gets you going. <laughs> oh, do I need it? No, nah, no, nah, those Red Bulls took <laughs> care of that. Uh, yeah. Sam Ellinger and the Texas offense really as a unit looked a whole lot yeah. more like the first half of the season as this first half went on. Yeah, and I think Texas Tech had something to do with that. You're not facing Baylor. You're not facing just a violent team. You're facing a, a really beat up crew that's in between defensively. Rush three, they can't get home. They blitz. Sam's been beating that nearly 280 yards of total offense by Ellinger himself in that first half. He was their leading rusher, which was nice to see. They wanted him to be aggressive down the field, to just trust it, to not overanalyze 
And when Devin Duvernay is running right behind people, it's easy to play a little game of pitch and catch. But yes, that felt an awful lot like September and October of what we saw of that Longhorn offense that scored 40 points a game versus this rough November stretch. Chad Duffy pretty darn good himself. Two touchdowns, more passing yards than Ellinger. And he and the Red Raiders will have it to begin half number two. A touchback, and here's Bruce. Joe, really, when talking to Tom Herman, he is really pleased with how, what he said, Sam Ellinger is just cutting it loose and playing. He goes, you know, he's such a conscientious kid, so intelligent. Sometimes he really tries to be too perfect. And right now, he's just playing, and we really have to keep playing for each other the way they are. On the other side of the ball, talking to Matt Wells, he said, listen, we got to make an adjustment. The unbalanced play they're giving us is really giving us some fits. But the message to my team, we're going to be right in this. we got to finish. That's what all I want to see from them, finish today. And that has been the issue this season with those four losses by three points or less. As Roderick Thompson gets dropped for a loss by Malcolm Roach. Yeah, Malcolm's having a nice game. Not a surprise. He's one of the four or five seniors on this roster playing his finale in this building. And just a nice job of shedding his one-on-one -on -one block and finishing. Texas Tech quickly back on it. Second down 11. Duffy slides in the pocket, lets it go to the sideline, and it looked like Azukama maybe mistimed his jump. Third and 11. I think that's exactly what happened, and these are the spots you just don't want to be in. And they weren't in many of them in the no. first half where they just had to play the drop back game where there wasn't some at the tempo and there wasn't the play action. These are the more challenging spots for this offense. Pressure coming. There is R.J. Turner. Just his second catch of the day, and it's a big one. Where well, they're looking at a three and out in the blink of an eye there to open the half, but instead the transfer has the catch and a first down and a gain of 18. From the 42, there's that power read play action play. He checks it down to Sir Roderick Thompson. Stopped by Chris Brown. Yeah, I'm curious if Matt Wells is going to get to a point here in the second half. And the offense moved the ball up and down. But we talked earlier in the open about Texas not playing that just complimentary football. Tech is having a hard time on defense. And I, I do wonder if there will be a time to slow this tempo down a little. Right, slow the game, help your defense just a little bit. And I know it's a fine line because your offense is finding huge success with the tempo. But just something to watch over the final 30. Thompson to midfield. Third and short. You're going to hear about him in, in Lubbock for the next three years. And Todd Orlando knows it. Thompson's a good, hard runner in this system. He's got it again here, and he's short. Got tripped up by B.J. Foster. So Texas Tech looking at a fourth down and a long one. Matt Wells, very aggressive. Maybe one of the most aggressive head coaches you'll find in college football. No hesitation. They will go for it. Well, and I think with your defense, you know you've got to score points, and you've got to be aggressive. Thompson joins Duffy in the backfield on fourth and one. It is Thompson. He's got a first down and then some inside the 35. So Sir Roderick Thompson on fourth and one goes for 15. Got a nice job by number 11 here, Dante Thompson. He just comes in and he's almost like a search blocker. As I watch their scheme, it's a lot of zone blocking, and they ask their big tight end to just kind of come in and clean up any of the of the contact that could be there so Thompson could get started and ultimately finish that first down run. 82 yards now. Thompson gets a rear rest and Jax Welch comes in. Fake to Welch. He got hit as he threw incomplete. Marquez Bimage, who recovered the fumble at the end of the first half, drilled Duffy and makes it second and ten. Yeah, and Mr. Bimage went right through two people. He went right through the tailback, Jacks Wel Jax Welch. He goes right through the offensive lineman. Watch Bimage come into your screen, tosses one, tosses two, and then forces the nearly forces the takeaway. Not the biggest guy, but he is strong. He's squatted 700 pounds a year ago. Ouch. Yeah, it hurts even just hearing that number, doesn't it? That on your back. Three 
man rush able to get pressure and the throw flutters in there incomplete. Carter, the intended receiver, DeMarvion Overshone delivered the hit, third and ten. And Chris Brown, I think, just gets his fingertip on it. Look at all the bodies in here that you're throwing that tight little curl route in between. It was actually an excellent throw, but I think either that distraction by Brown gets in the way from Keyshawn yet another third and long situation. And it looks like they will be without Carter. He's had the best day of his young career. Seven catches, 125 yards in that first half. Feels a little different than the Big 12 tape I've been watching this last month. We'll get ready to go up to Bedlam tomorrow night. And defense, you've seen a lot more of it this year. It's fun conversation with both head coaches about the level of defense you've seen, the level of violence you've seen. Maybe not through the first half today, but I have a sense defense is going to play a critical role here in the final 30 minutes. Fox College Football is sponsored by Wendy's, the official hamburger of NCAA football, and by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Keyshawn Carter feeling some of that physical defense. Limps his way off of the field in front of this third and ten play. Yeah, something Tom Herman told us yesterday. Lots of these physical defenses, Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas State. He's wishing his group could be a little bit more so. He's certainly going to be aiming to change some of that in the years ahead. On third down, Duffy will check it down. Jax Welch needs the 24, lowers the shoulder to get it. Let's see where they're going to spot him. It looks like they're actually going to spot him quite a bit short, a full yard short, and Texas Tech promptly on the ball to go for it again. That looked like a tough spot, didn't it? Bad spot. Yeah, there was no body part down. Yeah, there you Previous go. Previous play is under further review. Oh, you know Mr. Castleberry is going to get that right <laughs> in his final call. With the help from Gene Semko, the replay official. Yeah, the safety out of Odessa Permian High School. Jax Welch, turn running back. What's the first? See, the hand is not down. I think it is that going to be that knee, right? Where? When his knee goes down here, the hand is not down. It's got to be the forearm. The hand is not down. Where is that left knee when the ball? There it is. Well, we know this much. It shouldn't be at the 25, no. which is where they initially no, had no, no. spotted. Dean Blandino, our rules expert in Los Angeles. Happy Thanksgiving, Dean. What do you see on this one? Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, guys. I, I think this is a first down. You're looking for that first body part other than a hand or a foot. The left knee hits. The ball is in advance of the left knee, and it looks like he would get right about that 24-yard line, which was right at the line of the game. Yeah, the body control of these guys is remarkable. Right? You're running full speed. You're taking that contact. You know you got a, a major collision with the senior safety, Brandon Jones, right there, and then to have the awareness to put the hand down, not the elbow or the forearm. Well done. That last shot seemed like a really definitive one. I like the scientific way Dean says it. You're looking for the first body part down. Yeah. <laughs> in that case, the knee, and the knee in relation to where the ball was. What an effort. After further review, the runner made the line to gain. It's a first down. Please set the game clock to 12.02. 12 12.02. Texas Tech, part of the big story on offense for them today. They're now 6 of 10 on third down. That's third and 11, third and 10 right. out the gate. Those are usually wheelhouse. Todd Orlando's group to bring some pressure and get the ball out. They did. They got to the check down, but credit Welch in that one-on-one -on -one situation to get the needed yards. Back into the game comes Roderick Thompson. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and loses a half yard. Marvion Overshone in there from his safety spot. And that's another tackle for loss. And that's the number one group and the number one secondary in college football at creating tackles for loss from the secondary group. Duffy over the middle, incomplete. 
as Ukama, the intended receiver. He's beaten Jamison a couple of times, but over the middle this time, Jamison breaks it up. And so again, third and long, third and ten for Texas Tech. And even more challenging as you're in the high red zone and the field condenses. No T.J. Vasher in the game for Texas Tech, although Keyshawn Carter has come back in. He's to Turner and Ezu Kama to the near side. On third and ten, quickly to Turner, gets a block, and gets cut down shy of where he wanted to go. It was B.J. Foster. Yeah, and I think if R.J. hesitates, and it's hard to do that on a third and extra long, but it allows those linemen to get in front, he may have been able to get it, but a nice tackle there by Foster cutting through. And how about Matt Wells saying, uh-uh, we are going to go fourth and four. No issues at kicker. Trey Wolf very good. Playing aggressively, though. Duffy for the end zone. Didn't give him a chance. Incomplete, and Texas takes over. Chris Brown, the coverage, as he looked for Carter. Yeah. And Matt Wells is looking for a little bit of extra contact here, looking for a penalty that ultimately he's not going to get. I don't see any contact that impedes the receiver's opportunity. So as you perfectly called it, Joe, try to go get a ball that just didn't give him a chance. Fox College Football is presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Push button, get mortgage. Uh, production crew, got a look at Anthony Papadakis and Brooks Clark, two of the hardest working men in the business. Matt Victory deals with our complaints on a weekly basis. Mostly Sam Ellinger, most of mine, I have issues, yeah. Ellinger moved into second, Brock, all time at Texas, passing Major Applewhite in passing yards. Now trailing just Colt McCoy. Texas fans know well. Who Sam grew up watching, dreaming of being one day. Hands it off to Roshan Johnson here for a first down gain of three. Well, I think a big deal in that first half is Sam wouldn't hit a lot. You know, 32 sacks, last in the Big 12. That is a remarkable number for, I think, a pretty darn competent O-line. Avoiding the negative plays was a big part of their first half success. Duvernay on the bubble. Gets a couple of blocks and explodes. First down to the 35. So is this dude. Fourth catch, close to 150 yards on those four. Yeah, and and I just absolutely love the way he plays. Angry, wants the ball, wants to be a difference maker, and I think you're seeing some of the veterans making a point. Texas working quickly. Johnson gets three. Stop made by Xavier Benson. Now, Texas Brock over the last two games, a total of 31 points. They had what was a season low 21 against Iowa State. Then they had 10 against Baylor with the lone touchdown coming with one second left. 28 in the first half of this one. On second and seven, Ellinger sees pressure coming. Tech sticks with it, bringing five. It's picked up. He's got time. One on one for Epps, but incomplete. McPherson, the coverage, third and seven. Yeah, and I think Epps and a number of the folks here in the building wanted a penalty. Did not get one on the fourth and four. The inner you know, wanted a little interference. Is there contact? Is there a little pushing and shoving back and forth? Sure. But does any. Ooh. Ooh, that little grab. Sneaky. Those DBs are so sneaky, so like sneaky. That. No meaning to good hands there. That's where, as a wide receiver, though, you got to do your part to fight through, especially when you're much bigger and stronger. Empty it out for Ellinger on third down and seven. And again, Texas Tech showing pressure. They are bringing it. They move the pocket. Ellinger turns the shoulders. Duvernay. Fields trying to hold on for dear life. Duvernay to the 26. 36 more and they pick up third and long. Yeah, there's a number of different ways to handle pressure and this is a this is a good one Just get away from it right get outside that pocket square your shoulders That's actually a little bit of an easier throw It forces you when you throw to your left as a right-hander to square those shoulders And he puts it right on the money those two have got a connection this afternoon Wildcat here, Roshan Johnson, very comfortable in this role. The high school quarterback, it's a trick play. Ellinger setting up, had Johnson wide open but didn't see him. 
and now he'll throw it out of bounds. Boy, they had what they wanted, didn't they? They sure did. Yeah, I don't know what Sam was looking at here. Right, you're going to see the motion, right? Almost a, like a Philly special here that's become very popular. And you look right here, and this is usually your first read. I don't know what he was looking at. I guess he was looking at Brennan Eagles and felt the two defenders, two vertical shots. I think Sam could have pulled the trigger on either. He doesn't, and the stadium groans. A rare moment of indecision today. Yes. He's been very decisive from completing 13 of his 18 passes for 268. Second and 10, more pressure. Ellinger to the end zone. Jake Smith, what a catch! Touchdown, Texas! So I, I didn't pull the trigger on the early one, <laughs> but I see six defenders coming. I got one on one and which matchup do I want now? How about the true freshman? I mean, you just can't put in a better spot. Same route that you saw on the fourth and four the other side, the inside fade route where you try to give the receiver ample room to go get it. Ellinger keeps it in bounds and that's got to feel good for Smith. He's been on a touchdown drought. True freshman finds a way to finish. Gatorade National Player of the Year out of Notre Dame Prep in Scottsdale, Arizona with his sixth touchdown. And Sam Ellinger finding it again today in the final game of the regular season. He's got a 35-21 lead. Coming up next on Fox, Anthony Gordon leads the nation's top passing attack as Washington State gets ready to take on Washington in the Heward Bowl, the Apple <laughs> Cup. Coming up next right here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. What do you think? I think there's going to be some points scored in that one, too. And much like this game, a lot of shots down the field. An excellent drive. This is Sam's best game in quite some time. Got to feel awfully good in the season finale at home. Many times you get sacked 33 times as Ellinger has this season and you're going to watch this contact right in his face. The blitzing Adam Beck is coming in and Sam's eyes never go down. Right? Many times when you take a lot of hits and a lot of shots over the course of a season, you know, you know, you're just your body language, your eyes will drop into what's coming at you. And you can question a few things and maybe decision making at times or aggressiveness. There is no way you could ever question that kid's toughness. And he stands in there through contact and just drops a dime. Texas Tech trying to get it going again offensively. Here's Carter tiptoe on the sideline. A flag flies. He's going to get 15 more with a late hit. To Chris Brown over there to hit him late. Yeah, and I think this is an obvious one. After the play, a late hit out of bounds by number 15 of the defense. It's a 15-yard well, penalty. That's tough. Kind of first down. It is. That, that left foot was inbounds as he launches into him. So he technically is still on that, that boundary. But when you got a big old club like that and you're playing through a form injury, you just, I think sometimes you want to hit someone. It probably calls a little more attention to him, too. This must be a bruiser. Tipped at the line and incomplete. Jeffrey McCullough. Nice to see him back in the game. He's one of the many that came off the field earlier. I think that shoulder aching down in the goal line. That little play action scheme, that little power scheme. Get the hands up. Same play to the other side here, and this time they find Ezukama for a first down. They ran it 18 times against Kansas State last week. We're into double digits at this point here. <laughs> and again, there's no run off of that. So for the stat and analytics guys that say, rightfully so, you don't have to run it to have successful play action. First catch of the game for Travis Koontz. Red Raiders are case in point. They don't even run the, 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 the run play that would be associated with that action. It's still highly effective. They're moving quickly. Second down three. Duffy steps up, wings it into a window for Ezukama again. Back-to-back -back receptions. Or two of the last three for Ezukama. And he's slow getting up after Jones clocked him. Just a bunch of zone coverage. A right, couple touchdown lead. You see Orlando not bringing the pressure, not leaving those one-on-one -on -one situations that Texas Tech and Duffy hit earlier in the first half. 
trying to just play zone and keep everything in front. But Duffy piercing that zone with really good accuracy and anticipation. Full line change up front for Todd Orlando's bunch as they try to keep fresh players out there with how quickly Texas Tech is going. But you know pressure's coming, and Matt Wells knows it. He knows the guy on the other side likes to be aggressive. Play clock winding down. They get it off. Duffy hits Vasher. Stopped by Watson. Important drive here for Texas Tech to come away with points. Led this game 14 0 at one point. 35 of the last 42 going Texas's way. Duffy well protected underneath McLean Mannix. A yard short, stopped by Brown, third and one. And if it was four down territory the previous possession in a seven point game, I can assure you they will be going for it and not settling for field goals anytime soon. A bubble. Mannix again. First and goal, Texas Tech. First two catches of the day for the Nevada transfer. Nezukama getting some coaching on the sideline as they move it down to the five. Duffy all day to scan and throw high. Yeah, Thompson wide open at the back of the end zone. Went for Vasher and missed him. You know, one little thing here, if I'm the quarterback, I'm reminding my center to snap it. Right When you're facing a pressure group, you can't take your eyes off that defense. And we've seen a number of, of low snaps from Dawson Deaton. I know he's got a tough job as well on a wet day, but you want that ball to get back to you. You've got to have your eyes downfield. Texas Tech had a first and goal from the two earlier today and got stopped. They also tried Basher in a one-on-one -on -one earlier. He's got the whole field to the bottom of the field if they want him. That's where they're going. T.J. Vasher incomplete, no flags. With a coverage again from Watson. Yeah, with a 6-6 guy, I think Vasher's going to say, just give me some air. Just put it up here. Let me go jump over the top of them. Again, their contact, sure. But they're not calling it. They're not calling it either way. Some of that reaching and grabbing, he either got to fight through or that ball's just got to be up in the air for high jump. Got yeah, that same matchup here. Duffy looking the other direction. Zips one end zone, incomplete. Jamison breaks it up, in and out of the hands of Ezukama. And it's fourth and goal. This time, Matt Wells will send the field goal team out. That's really good coverage here from Jamison. It's been a good matchup. And Ezekama's won some of them, Jamison's won some of them, but ultimately against a bigger wide receiver, you've got to close the space. You've got to get right into his body. As Jamison does there to knock it away. Here, Brock, is Trey Wolf. Those 19 makes tied for the most of any freshman in the country. Redshirt freshman from Spring, Texas, from 23, and he's right down the middle. Automatic. So why now, and not, why now and not then? I don't know. Kind of interesting. Take the three, though. They will. Well, after going for it and failing earlier on fourth down, they decided to kick a field goal there and draw yeah. it with an 11. Yeah, and it was 28-21 at that point. It was a fourth and fourth ball. It was a little further extended at the 15. But my feeling is if you're going to go for it then, knowing you've got to score touchdowns in this building to do what he told Bruce, and that is to finish at the end, Right, and they're already in go mode. What was it, 17 of the last 18 plays have all been passes, so you know your defense is so banged up on the other side. Surprised to see he's settling for three right there. Chip shot, going to draw a fair catch. Download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play our weekend games for free and a chance to win $250,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money. Joe Davis, Brock Heward, Bruce Feldman here in Austin, Texas. Series that dates back to 1928. Sam Ellinger in this offense struggled so much over the last month. He's playing his best game, and the offense is playing its best game in a long time. And they mixed in enough run, right? They've been patient enough with it, the two, three, five-yard runs. And highly efficient down the field. Roshan Johnson will swing out on first and ten. Ellinger hits the crosser. That is the tight end, Jared Wiley, with his first career reception. A star quarterback in high school in Temple, Texas, 6'7", 255. We're excited about his potential as a tight end. He is going to grow into a good one here. Johnson straight ahead. 
as Herman said to us yesterday, just looking out at times, and it's true freshman Washington, it's true freshman Wiley, it's true freshman Rashawn Johnson. Right, there are a lot of young Longhorns been thrown in the fire here in the second half of the season with injuries in front of them or injuries over the course of the season. That should pay dividends over the long term. Second and four, Johnson again, hold off the left side with a stiff arm, gets into the secondary, knocked out of bounds by Smith after 16 more. And that was an excellent job by center and left guard getting the second level. Look at the movement between Braun and Shackelford, the two seniors, right? They, on that nose tackle, get the movement, you get to the second level. Again, things you just did not see consistently. Yes, against far better, more superior defenses the last few weeks. But it starts up front, and those big boys had blocked well, they protected well. They set up these skill guys for success today. They faked the bubble and looked downfield. Ellinger will have that one knocked away. Adrian Fry recovered at the last moment, or else Marcus Washington is going to have another big play. Yeah, that was all speed here. <laughs> Fake the little bubble. There's a little hesitation by Fry, but that is all want to in effort by the corner turn safety because of injuries to knock that one away. So second and ten. Got to create a negative play if you're Texas Tech. Which they do as well as any team in the conference. Only rush three here. It's quarterback draw. Ellinger lets the blocks develop. Breaks a tackle and gets a first down. 14 yards, he's nearing 100 on the ground. He was stopped by Fields. Once again, watch the big boys get out in front. I told you on the previous drive, I thought RJ, the receiver for the Red Raiders, could have set those blocks up. The quarterback's showing you how to have that kind of patience. Get out in that open field, you want to rush, you got to allow your big boys to do their job. Here comes Texas Tech, Ellinger on the move, has Jake Smith, who sets up first and goal. Boy, this offense is clicking. Who are these guys compared to what we've seen lately? <laughs> well, they're the Longhorns we saw in September and October. But without Colin Johnson. Yes. And without Cade Brewer. And getting after a group defensively right now that's been exploited, right? Through October, November, one of the worst pass defenses in college football. And what I like is they're not stepping off the gas. First and goal from the nine, here comes Johnson. Roderick Washington plugging the hole. Now this is a spot where Texas Tech has been elite in the month of November. That is when teams move it into the red zone, stopping them right there, limited them to a field goal, and how huge would that be here? Uh, it's a have to. If you settled for the field goal on your side, that's a have to. In fact, four of 16, the last three opponents in the red zone. The Longhorns today, perfect. Three for three, scoring touchdowns. Second and goal, it's a quarterback lead. Ellinger head down to the goal line. Spot him at the one. Third and goal as Rico Jeffers kept him out of the end zone. Yeah, and I think this is a pretty heads up play by Ellinger. You're thinking, why not reach the ball out, right? All of this contact, because you don't know. The worst thing you could do is extend that ball. You want to still protect it. And I do think a body part, at least from first glance, is down before that ball crosses the plane. Texas has put up a wall a couple of times with Texas Tech inside the five today. Can Texas Tech return the favor? On third down and goal. Johnson spins in. Touchdown Longhorns. Second one today for the freshman Johnson. Got to run through contact. Sometimes you got to BYOB. Bring you be your own blocker. Right? You got two guys right there. But one of them's got half your body. You got to run through that arm tackle as he does through the corner fields there and be your own blocker. Run through contact in the red zone. On the goal line, the true freshman getting it done. Four for four scoring touchdowns now. Once they get inside the red zone, that becoming a big part of this game, big part of the story. Longhorns four for four. Texas Tech just two for five on those red zone trips. Back to Austin in 30 seconds.
Sam Ellinger and the Longhorns recapturing some of the early season form today. They're one of the most productive offenses in the country over the first month and a half. Then a low the last four weeks. Averages 21 points over those four games. A double that today. Well, they've dictated. They have put Keith Patterson and these Red Raiders in a bind. You want to rush three? We'll pick you apart. We'll run the QB. You want to bring the blitz? You've seen tremendous communication. Tom Herman with a good plan. I think moving the pocket as well. And Taking shots down the field, hitting them. Yeah, all cylinders firing this afternoon. Sam Ellinger, 16 of 22, 323 yards passing, and he's done plenty on the ground, too. And as you kind of look back at his numbers from a season ago, as you kind of compare and contrast this year to last year, that phase of the game, he was a monster a season ago, running at 16 touchdowns. Then more of that today, and then, man, is it nice to have Duvernay down the field creating separation, but not just the upperclassmen trusting the true freshman here. Smith as well with, I think, his prettiest ball of the day on that touchdown. On first down, Duffy delivers a dart for Ezukamo. Came free in the middle of that defense, quickly moving it into Texas territory. 28 more yards. Man, has there been some open space between the 20s and has Duffy been on the on target? Yeah. Jeez. 351. Career game against Texas last year, 444. And approaching that territory again. Here's Carter. Got three. Got stopped by Overshone. The job that this staff has done with Jet is remarkable. I mean, three starts a season ago. You know, as they told us pretty bluntly, and I think probably told him before the year, you're going to be the third or fourth guy. And to watch him grow and develop and play at this level today is just awesome. Steps into pressure. Another completion to Azukama. And this offense, it resembles what they'll be long term, but yes. it is almost completely tailored to what he does well. Yes. And a lot of these pieces are going to be around. You're going to have to replace a couple tackles. Your two seniors there that are giving Duffy some of this time to operate. But the skill guys, you're going to see in Lubbock for some time making plays. One of those skill guys, well-earned rest as Ukama goes out. First down from the 35. Three rush. Duffy checks it down. Thompson one on one with Chris Brown who makes the stop. You know, it'll be interesting to look at the numbers when this is all said and done. And Todd Orlando is the guy that brings pressure 50% of the time on first down. Those numbers are way down today. And I do wonder if some of that is just the head game and the matchup on the other side with Matt Wells. Too tall for Vasher. Right, we talked about that and just, you know, familiarity between those two when you had the headsets together as they did at Utah State and Matt Wells knows Todd Orlando and knows him really well and I said that to Todd do you think that affects you in any way tomorrow he said not really but I will tell you their pressure rate on early downs you know the course of the game not what you normally see trying to make Texas Tech play the long field showing pressure here and they bring it on third and nine here's Vasher spinning off contact Reaching close to the first down. He didn't get a very good spot. Fourth and a yard. And I say that he was down before that reach. Mm. This may be worth taking another look at. They're going to let him go on fourth and one. Here comes Thompson, first down. Inside the 20, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Might be the big right tackle Holding steal. by number 78 of the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. And it was. And that is a tough one when that ball bounces outside of you. The future senior bowl invite, Terrence Steele, who started 46 games in Lubbock. So instead of fourth and one, and instead of a fourth down pickup, fourth and 11. Yeah, it's right here on the edge. And I think you got to make that call. And they're going to go for it. Even on fourth down and long. Pressure coming from Texas. Duffy throws low and incomplete, and they turn it over on downs to end this third quarter. Yeah, for Duffy, that's unfortunate. That's his first sinker of the day. Whether it's the grip, whether it's the moisture, or whether it's just having to throw on every single play, you're not going to be perfect. And this slider got away from him down and away, and it remains all Longhorns.
Welcome back to Fox College Football, presented by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Texas with 519 yards of offense. This is after they averaged 359 total over the previous two games. They had scored six touchdowns, make that seven touchdowns the previous three games. They've got six of them today. This man here, Daniel Young, has one, but loses a few yards with Rico Jeffers making the tackle. Down to Bruce. Joe, I talked to Sam Ellinger this week, and I said, you know, you guys have obviously been really struggling. What is the message you want your teammates to take this week? And he said, everybody owes it to these seniors to stay focused, play to the best of their abilities, to try to send them out on the right note. He said, these guys came in, they were five and six, and then changed happened. And he goes, they invested a lot to lay the foundation, and we deserve, they deserve to be sent out the right way. Locked in a screen for Johnson. Loses a couple more. Xavier Benson, the tackle. Now, it's one thing to say that, that you're going to play for the seniors and you're going to be inspired even though you're just six and five. But it's another thing to come out here in rainy conditions with not a packed house and then start very slowly yep. and still find it. Yeah, I think that shot to Epps on their third possession down 14, just trusting one of the young guys, inexperienced guys, to go up, hit that explosive play. And really, from that point on, they have not looked back offensively. And I also think a short week helps. Not, not as much time to put in so much stuff and chasing ghosts. Just get back to who you are and the basics of what you do best. Third and 13. Tech desperately needed to get off of the field. Snap it just in time. Red Raiders drop seven. Ellinger's sideline and incomplete. And they do force a three and out. Yeah, those were two throws on back-to-back -back that, that looked like wet ball drills. So maybe the same with Duffy on his fourth down pass. Not many misses for either of these quarterbacks today, but I think both a little bit affected here by the weather in the fourth. And it seems like it is raining a little bit harder the last few minutes than it has a lot of the day. As Shooks Wabuku goes back. I mean, you uh, you grew up in Washington. You're playing in rain every day. Born in rain. Born in rain, <laughs> yeah. Came out with an umbrella. <laughs> Cortex. Very high punt from the guard. Fair catch from Mabuku. Fox College Football is sponsored by Jared, here to be devoted. And by AT&T Business, providing edge-to-edge -edge intelligence. On the senior day in Austin, Malcolm Roach, captain of the defense. Devin Duvernay became a captain of the offense as this season went on. And Colin Johnson, who they have missed sorely over the final month of this regular season. 16 of those guys getting honored today as they play a DKR for the final time. And only about five that are starters, significant contributors, an awfully small class. I think played a role in some of the challenges depth-wise they had here in November. Wow, look at Brandon Jones, or actually... That is Taquan Graham. A shot out of a cannon to make that stop. Well, there's our power play, right? Here's our power play action, and Graham said enough's enough. You're not getting me anymore. You don't run that play, yes. he's saying. <laughs> I don't have to honor anything, because there's no run that comes off of this. So the minute I see the block down in the guard pole, I'm going to be right in your lap, Mr. Duffy. Second down and long. Here's I.J. Turner. He got dropped quickly by Jamison. Third and long. That's a couple plays now by Jamison here in the second half down in the red zone. That is all about read and react. All right, is that first step? You got to win. And then once you go, man, you got to finish. It's well done. This is going to be the 25th consecutive pass call for Texas Tech. Jed Duffy's thrown the ball 52 times. Third down, 16. He steps up. He lets it go. That's broken up and incomplete. Iodelia Dayaway, the redshirt freshman, defending Azukama, who is reaching up to that neck. Yeah, he takes a shot here. You're going to see linebacker. He's reading the entire way. He's watching the eyes. He's felt that in cut come a number of times. And he collisions it right into, unfortunately, it looks like the shoulder, the neck. There's a comma here. And you can see as a comma reach for that immediately.
I'm going to take a break. Yeah, they call easy. Eric Azukama has got a great future, really great present. Had a good day today, but leaves the game with an injury. And Todd Orlando's defense gets off of the field. They are, Brock, the worst fourth quarter defense in Power Five, giving up close to two touchdowns per fourth quarter. Yeah, number two on that list will follow us in the Apple Cup. That'd be in Washington, say, with a couple meltdowns that led to some losses for them. That was a pretty good three and out of both coverage. Of reading, reacting, both defense alignment and corner, and then the linebacker getting underneath it on day away. Well, line drive punt. Brandon Jones got crunched. Time for a game break with Sam Farber. Number 17, Iowa trying to make a case for a New Year's Six Bowl and in the process eliminate Nebraska from bowl eligibility. Amir Smith marched set a 45-yard touchdown run. They had 7 nothing at the time. It's now 7-3 Iowa in their Big Ten finale. Speaking of which, tomorrow, Big Ten action for Big Noon. Ohio State and Michigan from the Big House. What do you think? Can Michigan give Ohio State fits tomorrow? Ooh. That's uh, just such a hard one speed-wise to match up with the Buckeyes. Now first down Johnson for two. Ohio State has won seven straight in that series. 14 of the last 15. The positive is Michigan has more offensive firepower, kind of like this Texas team. Right? When, when they got it going offensively, they can score a bunch of points. And Michigan right now is playing their best offensive football, most confident offensive football in years and years. They're going up against a pretty stout crew, though, in that Buckeye defense. Duvernay. Stop by McPherson. Hmm, Devin Duvernay is slow to get up. We have not had a game this season with so many guys that have been either slow to get up, got knocked out of the game, or beat up coming in. You can see the full force of that tackle coming down on the shoulder on that jet sweep of Duvernay. That is one tough cookie to come off the field. I guess it's fitting that these two teams are the ones that are leaving injured players littered all over the field. Both came in with so many. Not escaping today unscathed either. It's going to be a delay. Yeah, trying to check, right? Trying to make sure all the protection calls are right with that pressure look coming. A delay of game by number 11 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Because Sam knows exactly what's coming with a Texas Tech team that is trailing on the scoreboard by three-plus scores. He knows on third and six. That's a pressure down anyway. Too much time trying to communicate those calls. Seventh Longhorn penalty, third and 11. Inside 11 minutes. Ellinger 322 through the air, 83 on the ground. Five wide on third down and 11. Stands in and throws incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver, and Xavier Benson, the coverage, fourth and 11. Crowd wanted a flag, won't get it. What do you think? Uh, that, that one, I think, exceeded the amount of, of contact. We've not seen it called all day long. These officials on both sides have been consistent, allowing these guys some contact. But I think this is one here where you're impeding Johnson's ability to go get the ball. All right, the hands are out of there early. Now, if he makes the catch, I don't know if he converts the third and extra long anyway, but there was a fair amount of contact there before the reception. And the defenses have started to step up here. Three consecutive three and outs. These two teams combined. Fair catch from Rubuka. 10-29 left to go. Texas Tech needed to be close to perfect down the stretch. Down three scores. College football playoff rankings. Big one on Fox tomorrow. Ohio State in Michigan. What else do you have your eye on? Uh, yeah, I'll be watching that one closely. You're the Michigan guy. Do you think they've got a shot? Uh, after that yes. one, I'm watching LSU. I think A&M's got a shot against LSU. I really do. You think Michigan? I'll throw it back your way. You think they can keep that a game for four quarters and put the pressure on the Buckeyes? Uh, I don't know. Here's Duffy. I mean, Ohio State 
is the first team since 1999 to lead the country in scoring offense and scoring defense. Got to go back to the 1990 Virginia Tech Hokies to find wow. the last team that did that. I heard Joel Klatt say this week that if Ohio State is to run the table, they will go down as one of the greatest teams in college football history. There's another injury here. Because I think to Joel's point, ultimately that would mean Michigan tomorrow. That would mean Minnesota, Wisconsin. That would mean a, you, know, you look at the four teams remaining heavyweights, whether it's Clemson, LSU, Georgia, whatever comes out of that. I mean, you're talking about some major, major heavyweight bouts in the next month plus. Call it leaves the game, second and two. 10-15 left to go. Thompson lost the football, and Texas has it. The big man, Tavondre Sweat. The true freshman from Huntsville, Texas, recovered it after it was jarred loose by Marquez Bimage. And so today, Bimage with a fumble recovery and now a forced fumble. Yeah, Bimage is having himself one heck of a game in this finale. You see Osai reaching, but it's Bimage right there with that finish and that contact and that punch. And then a big man's dream, man. He's thinking, and I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, Six. hey, dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go hug Bevo after this one. He rubs that <laughs> belly. <laughs> so two Texas Tech turnovers, a team that has not turned it over very frequently this season. There he is. He wasn't scared. No. <laughs> he Come at me, bro. He I was think saying. he knew that Sweat was going to get tackled long before he could charge another 25-plus. Longhorns take over at the 24. Ellinger rolled into his left, square in the shoulders. And now we'll check it down. Here's Duvernay. First down. Tiptoes in. Touchdown. And then a flag flies. Twenty four yard touchdown as it stands right now. We'll see what the flag is realize the last eight takeaways by Texas defense. The Longhorns scored zero points in return was well, that left foot out of bounds. I think will come into question as well Had not converted off a takeaway the last eight opportunities zero flat zero points. But we'll see what the calls are here chance to change that dynamic as well. I think the officials are getting together on a couple things. What is the flag and did the official have him stepping out in real time. Prior to the score, a personal foul of blindside block mm. by number 13 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's still first down. So that goes on Brennan Eagles, regardless of if he stepped out or not. This is not going to be a touchdown with a penalty on the sophomore receiver. Yeah, and this is a point of emphasis coming back as the blocker. It's actually on Marcus Washington, 15. Brennan's like, that's messed up. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Throw me under that bus. That was a true freshman, and you love the heart to come back. That is something that's been emphasized all season long. Here comes Johnson, the high school quarterback throws incomplete. You could see the the gears turning, right? He was yep. ready to let that one go. He did Rico Jeffers applied the pressure? And by the way, back to that Washington hit. You can come back, but you've got to lead with your hands, right? You can't lead with the shoulder into that defenseless player. Kind of a lesson there for a true freshman. Hard to do. You come back and block, but it's got to be that first contact using your hands, not shoulder pads. for a first down. What a way for Sam Ellinger to finish up this roller coaster of a season. More than 300 yards passing, close to 100 yards rushing. As he has had to battle through injuries around him, some undisclosed injuries of his own that he's played through. 
coming off that 10 and 4 season, the Sugar Bowl win, the expectations sky high, not the kind of year anybody anticipated. Put a nice capper on it, at least to the regular season. Johnson bowling his way towards the end zone, spot him down inside the one. I'll tell you what, this guy is going to be fun to watch with an offseason under his belt. Remember, just a true freshman converted quarterback in a year in the weight room that he is going to spend. And you're seeing him play with the most power he has this season. That, that may get another look. Or they'll just Come give on. it to him and let him finish off what he started. That is the third today for Roshan Johnson. And that is the fifth trip into this red zone with five touchdowns for the Longhorns. 30 of 39, nearly 80% coming into the, this game in that area. But if Tech was going to have any chance, as depleted as they are, they had finished there. And that man will be sore tomorrow. But he's going to be sore with a bunch of touchdowns under his belt. And the Texas offense that managed 31 over the last two games combined has 49 today. Fox College football is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today. Tomorrow on Fox, a full slate of big-time college football action lined up. All starting with the big noon Saturday game of the week. Top-ranked Ohio State, number 13, Michigan. That number 16, Notre Dame in California to take on Stanford. Wrap up the day with Bedlam, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. All tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app. I'm gonna put the... Put the TV on Fox and don't have to touch the clicker the rest of the day. Boy, who's that Matthew deep in there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Doing the sway. <laughs> Keyshawn Carter. Oh, my goodness. Got absolutely pummeled by Montrell Estelle. Bruce Feldman, what's going on, man? I'm going to tell you about my Heisman top three. How about that? Uh, Sweet. By the way, Brock, I what? hope for the Aggie's sake, Joe Burrow's still not listening to this broadcast because he heard you put him on upset alert, <laughs> and he's already ticked off enough about last year's game, and you don't want to make Joe Burrow upset. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, he's changed what we think of LSU's offense to be. I think he's the clear number one, but keep an eye on Chase Young this weekend. He has been the most dominant player in college football. He does, he does have that two-game suspension he's had to sit out, but I think if he goes off again tomorrow and then in the Big Ten title game, he has a chance not only to get to New York, not only to get to New York, he might win a lot of first-place votes. I just wonder if a lot of the, the Heisman electorate is going to put him on their ballot knowing he was suspended for two games. And my number three guy, it had been Jalen Hurts in the top three. He struggled with turnovers the last few weeks, hasn't been as sharp. I got Tyler Huntley moving in there as tough as anybody, and he's made a ton of big plays, and that's why they're a team that has a chance to make the playoff. Carter with another catch. Yeah, just kind of flying under the radar, sneaking his way in there, always so steady. Kind of the same way Utah is big picture this yeah, year. Yeah, but he has been so he's awesome. I mean, the fourth quarter, he's been tremendous. He plays through a knee injury that others would have missed at least two games. He's got an okay offensive line. He's got a tremendous tailback, but he's really elevating his, his people around him offensively. We got great defense. I like those three. Good job, Brucey. Screen play. Thompson got away from Jamison, and Malcolm Roach came Superman diving in after him. Leader of the leaders, they say. Malcolm Roach, son of a high school coach. Like a coach on the field for Todd Orlando playing his final game here today. That's awesome. Second down, six for Texas Tech and Jen Duffy, who's thrown it 56 times. Throw number 57. Might have to wait. Nope, we got it in, and he got drilled. A flag flies. Chris Brown hit him. And there's an injured player. I believe that is Malcolm Roach, senior we just talked about.
The runner was still in bounds when the hit occurred. There is no foul. Okay, so as you hear from Cooper Castleberry, there is no penalty. So they turn their attention to the injured player and Roach to his feet. The question I would have there is we saw it earlier on Chris Brown, right? Where I think it was somewhat similar. And I know in the NFL this this is going to be called because they're going to protect the quarterback at all costs. Right, and that is a quarterback that's clearly giving himself up. He's running horizontally to the sidelines. And I think that's what Matt Wells is saying. Boy, if they had that emphasis when you were around, you might oh, still be playing. Right. Huh? Still be <laughs> still be chucking. No, remember, I, I could not <laughs> and do not run. So I would never put myself in that situation because I could never get there. Like many I see you on the treadmill. You run pretty good. <laughs> Third and six. What we got? I think Cooper is going to make the most of the final <laughs> seven minutes here. For 42 years, Cooper Castleberry being an official. The previous play was a pass. Thank you. All right. I'm doing a little scorekeeping, a little bookkeeping. Third and six. Duffy looking to throw again, and he will get ripped down. What a day for Marquez Bimage. Forced fumble, fumble recovery, and now a sack. I think that might have been by the hair as well. Yeah, this D-line is feeling a one-dimensional game as you see Bimage come in. Does he use the locks of love? <laughs> Ow! And that is legal. And that hurts. Tough love. Lots of tough love there. Austin McNamara's punt is a really good one. Wow! Bounces down inside the 10. And rolls out at the 11. That's a 58 yarder. Uh, thinking back a couple plays ago to the conversation about the hit along the sidelines. Dean Blandino, you were watching. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, some contact on Duffy. We saw the one where they grabbed his hair. That is legal, like you guys said. But that one at the sideline, to me, you know, the ball is gone. The defender has to let up. I realize he's still in bounds, but, but I think that's a flag that you can keep down. Compare that to the other one where we had the hit on the runner where he was still in bounds going up the field. And you just want to see the consistency in those two calls. Agreed. Agreed. And Chris Brown at the next level would get a nice FedEx envelope with a heavy, heavy fine hitting a quarterback like that. Whether even if it is penalized or not. Redshirt freshman quarterback Casey Thompson comes in replacing Sam Ellinger. Fourth game he's played in. Hands it off to Roshan Johnson. Johnson gets eight and yeah, moves over 100 yards for the day at the Newcastle, Oklahoma. His pops Charles was a Sooner and a pretty darn good Sooner quarterback. Brother Kendall played receiver there and he said, nope, I'm not going to follow in their footsteps. I'm going to go down and wear the burn orange and he's watched a pretty good one today. He's watched a good one over the last three years with Sam Ellinger and eventually there will be an opportunity for Casey Thompson, a guy that the staff really likes with both his arm and his quickness. Texas is going to finish off the regular season. It appears seven and five. And while that is not what anybody had in mind coming into the season, it will certainly change the tone at least a little bit going into bowl season. As Daniel Young breaks loose across the 35. You know, I said to you earlier, I think there may be some advantage in a little bit of a shorter week. And I bet Tom Herman speaks to that after this game that they simplified some things. They made it about them and not chasing every scheme out there to, to beat a three down rush. I'll tell you what else this season does is it shuts up any of the noise of the offseason. The noise of you back. The, the noise of you beat Georgia. The noise of expectation. I think you're going to watch a lot of these freshmen get in that weight room. And, and if they're going to take a step, those freshmen that played this year, and you can include Rashawn Johnson right near the top of that list. They've got to add strength. They've got to add power. They've got to add to their game as young players and develop. So they're not 7-5 again. Young again. 
Yeah, the 10 wins last year, that was the most they'd had in a decade. Got to go back to 2009, which is also their last Big 12 championship season. And to your point about these young players getting bigger, Tom Herman said the biggest issue has been developing these guys once they get them in because they've had back-to-back -to -back top three recruiting classes, but those guys just haven't developed the way that he had hoped. But those teams, you know what they were? They were dominant. And last year, yeah, you won 10 games, but you were 7-3 and three in one-possession games. Seven and three, you want a bunch of those. You just know you're going to regress to the mean. You're not going to go seven and three in one possession games all the time. This year, you're three and three. So if you're actually going to get back to where you're dominant, something that's not been the case this decade, to me, you've got to just physically change and physically develop and impose your will in ways they didn't even, to me at times, do fully a season ago. So bowl game coming up for Ellinger and the Longhorns. What bowl game might that be, Bruce? Well, it depends, guys. I mean, if both Oklahoma and Baylor go to the CFP or go to the CFP and obviously a New Year's Six Bowl, they have a chance to go to the Alamo Bowl. Uh, a lot will depend on what Iowa State does this weekend. If not, the Camping World Bowl in Orlando, they've not been there, and there's actually a Camping World Bowl scout in attendance today. So Orlando would probably be a good destination for them. And I know that's not what they probably wanted at the beginning of the year or even any point up till now. But uh, like I said, they haven't been there in a long time, ever. Uh, that's the old Citrus Bowl, Camping World Bowl. Uh, Texas Bowl next in the pecking order. It would be the second time in three years. It would be the third time in six years. And a lot of times you see bowls prefer to bring in new blood. The nice thing they will have next year, though, and then Matt Wells is going to have to compete against, and that's a senior quarterback in Ellinger with all of this wealth of experience. But I could put a list of ten guys that if you're going to take that next step, and I gave you a couple of them, and I don't think there's much more physical development you're going to get out of Ellinger. That, that's been there and done. There are a lot of these defensive players, Osai and Bonds, a bunch of guys in your secondary, Stearns that got beat up this year. A lot of them have to make that commitment to grow physically and continue their development. Young, a yard short. A game break with Sam Farber. Joe, coming up at 4 Eastern, it's the Apple Cup. Washington hosting Washington State, whose quarterback, Anthony Gordon, leads the nation in passing yards and touchdowns. Huskies, though, have won six in a row in this rivalry game. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman have the call. Brock, who you got in this one? Ooh, I got a fourth quarter game on a beautiful day, by the way. 43 and sunny for Tim and crew out there in Seattle. I think Wazoo is going to score some points. Anthony Gordon's going to throw the ball up and down the field because I don't think for the first time in that matchup, and you called, what, the last three? Something like that. But you, bunch. You, Huskies are not going to rush three or four and impact the game the way they have recently. Thompson on the replay shows off some of his ability getting a first down into Texas Tech territory. And there's some of those quicks the staff likes. And you like the junior quarterback continuing to cheer on the underclassmen. You know, in that Apple Cup over the last few years, Greg Gaines and Vita Bay and those guys dominated the line. They could rush three if they had to rush four against that air raid system. That's how you win. And Matt Wells knows it, right? He knows it in this conference. Fun talking to him yesterday about this Big 12 and where it's going. And he's like, the difference with Baylor and why they're doing what they're doing is their three win. Right? Everybody in Iowa State's their three get home a lot more often and that's why they're playing a bunch of quality defense. Thompson with a last second pull. Back to the line of scrimmage. I just want to correct something from earlier. I said that's the old Citrus Bowl. It's an additional bowl run by the Citrus Bowl committee. Appreciate Camping you World clarifying Bowl. that. Yeah. I want to give you bad info. Thanks. This is 21-14 Texas Tech at one point. Yep. And I think for Texas Tech on their side, right? I mean, that was the buzzword is develop. Matt Wells, I think, really excited in his staff about their recruiting class and feels like they can recruit the kind of players, the blue collar, hardworking players to Lubbock. You got a bunch of them already. But much like he did at Utah State, you will see those guys equally spend that time growing and developing. What a likable staff, him and David Yost, and the defensive side, Keith Patterson. No you, question. You can see why a program and the, the players within the program are going to enjoy playing for this staff. And kept playing this year mm -hmm. through adversity. 
I mean, kept playing. This is this is a rarity this year. This will be their right eighth loss of the season. Four of them by three points or less. The other two were were very compelling games. Down, to, I think, ten points, fourteen points at Arizona. Game closer than that. This team has not gotten their doors blown off much this season. John Hutchings, the injured player. Let's go to Bruce. Guys, there was an interesting moment last week that uh, some of the Texas Tech staff told me about. The night before the game, Broderick Washington, who's a captain and their defensive lineman, kind of gathered everybody around, stood up in front of them and said, this guy is going to change this place. And he said, I wish I had another year with this staff. And at that point, he said, y'all are fixing to get this thing flipped. And I think that meant a lot to the staff, but also, as you mentioned, how they've recruited and what they're trying to do with really changing the culture within the locker room as much as anything else. And that is not a common thing where you get a guy who's going into his senior year and gets a new staff that comes in and likes him that much. Yep. He's going to stand up and talk about wishing he had more time with him. Well, we talked to P.J. Fleck earlier, right? He talked about the adversity they faced and all the guys that unfortunately went out of that program. Yeah, up in, in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, and had to write that shit. I think Bruce really wanted to share that just so he could say, y'all fix him. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled it off, yes, didn't he? Yes, he did. They're down four with a minute left. Texas running the clock out here with Thompson in for Ellinger. Heavy dose of Daniel Young. Finishes Ford. That looks like he has enough. Huge offensive production for the Longhorns. More than 600 yards. That includes the 100-yard day for Roshan Johnson. And Devin Duvernay, big plays mm -hmm. all over the place. A lot of what we saw early in the season, you know, when they were humming and they were going. Hey, Cooper Castleberry, congratulations on a great career. 42 years, as we mentioned. 18 in the Big 12. You hate to jinx it, but this could be the final call of his career. Just doesn't want it to end, Brock. You all fixing to make a call here or what? <laughs> <laughs> Stares longingly at the flag. Been a great run, he's thinking. <laughs> it would be great if he got on the mic and said, will you all just give me some time, please? <laughs> I believe Tom Herman said it's not a personal foul. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct by number 73 of the offense. Mm. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's fourth down. It's the second week in a row that Parker Braun has been called for one in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I was watching that. He was driving his defender <laughs> into the ground. The Georgia Tech grad transfer likes to run block. He was an all-ACC performer at Georgia Tech, and you know, a week ago he found himself out of the game because of a little extracurricular activity in that time. He's trying to make his final statement on this turf as well. It was a weird one. They gave him the heave ho, and so he thought he was ejected. Yep. And the official said, no, no, I just wanted him out for one play. <laughs> well, it's fourth and 16, and so the punt team is going to need to come out. I'm stuck in quicksand here. You don't have anywhere you need to go tonight, do you? Uh, no, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> Just up the road a little bit for a good one up uh, up in Stillwater that I don't think will feel quite like this one today. I think it'll be a little more contested down to the wire. You expect it to be close? I do. I do. I, I think Oklahoma State, I would add, is one of those teams this month that has played some tremendous defense, which is... Kind of weird to say in this conference over the years, but there's a bunch of them playing good, hard, physical football. And that environment uh, is going to be something. That is a hard place to go for a night game. You can watch it on Fox. David begins with Ohio State, Michigan. will finish with Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Douglas Coleman, the fair catch, and another game break with Sam.
Joe Virginia has lost 15 straight versus Vatek. They're up three, and they're about to get the Hokies' Hendon Hooker in the end zone. Alonzo, the sack, Eli Handback, scoop and score Virginia 39 to 30. They hang on. They'll win the ACC Coastal and play Clemson in the ACC Championship. Less than a minute to go. How about Bronco Mendenhall getting the Cavaliers to the ACC championship game? 15 years. Wow. I, would, I would not. That is hard to do. Final seconds. Keyshawn Carter. What a way for him to go into the offseason with a career performance today. That's his 11th catch. By the way, I was in the ACC. I think now that is seven different teams in that division over seven years representing mm. in the title game. Absolute parody. And Sam wanted to do it for the seniors. Wanted to quiet some of the outside noise. Wanted to put together an offensive day. And the Longhorns certainly did that. 49 points, 610 yards. Matt Wells' first season at Texas Tech finishes 4-8. and eight. Tom Herman's Longhorns go 7-5 and five and will await their bowl destination. Been looking for big plays. They found a bunch of them today. And the man you just saw in Devin Duvernay produced a bunch. Roshan Johnson breaks 100 yards on the ground. But it all started with Sam Ellinger who throws for 348, runs for 83 more, and three total touchdowns for the junior quarterback. Ted Duffy in a losing effort, 399 and two touchdowns. Bruce Feldman has Sam Ellinger. Sam, you guys were down 14 to nothing. The sideline seemed like it was flat. And then all of a sudden, you guys erupted. What changed? Uh, we just got back to what what we what we knew to do, um, playing our type of football. We were shooting ourselves in the foot at the beginning of the game, but we found our groove and, and came together as a team. When I talked to Tom Herman at halftime, he said, you were playing really well. He goes, you're so conscientious. Sometimes you're trying to be too perfect. You just got to cut it loose. That sounds simple, is it? <laughs> It, it is, um, but not, 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 it, isn't, it isn't at the same time because um, there's a lot that's going on and defenses do a lot to try to confuse you. So uh, maybe overthinking sometimes and trying to be too perfect, but um, I'm, I'm glad we got the win today. When we spoke this week, you talked about how important it was for you to send the seniors out the right way. What has this group meant to you? It's, it's unreal. Um, They've been here since I first got here, and they've been through so much. Some of my best friends, and, and they will be for life. I love them to death. I'm so glad we got to send them out the way we did today. Right, thanks, Sam. Thank you. Joe, back to you. All right, Bruce. Heck of a day for him. Heck of a way for Texas yeah, to finish. Exactly the, the way he wanted to finish it here. After the adversity of this month, and, the, and then a bowl game on top of it. And as I said earlier, quiet the noise of the offseason. Get to work and make it a different 2020. 14-0 hole becomes a 49-24 win for the Longhorns. We'll get you back to Mike Hill and Petros Papadakis in Los Angeles for more post-game coverage after these messages. Got the Apple Cup coming up, and then what a day on Fox tomorrow. We'll talk to you from Stillwater with Bedlam tomorrow night.